Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. Morning, guys. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? Hi, Jenny. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you, Shannon? Good. Here we go. Starting a new year. I feel better about your chances. Oh, you feel better? Yeah. You've had a long, hard... Okay. Two and a half years. Look, I know you want to gloat. You're up four cases, and it's only February. But I'll get it back. I know. I'll Le- get it LeBron's back. LeBron's going to get it back for yep. you. He's going to make 97% of his free throws no, 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 from no, here no. on, right? No, no. probably not. Well, How needs, are you? He does need to go on a hot streak for me to get he back. He does. we got to get him playing first. Well, he'll be all, he played tonight. But on today's show, did LeBron <laughs> endorse Michael Jordan as the GOAT? We will discuss that. And what? then, does Dak Prescott belong in the same sentence as the Tom Brady? But, hey, yeah. let's start with some trade rumors. The NBA trade deadline is two days away. Anthony Davis wants to be traded, but it's going to take a time ton to land him. Multiple reports say the Lakers increased their offer to the Pelicans yesterday with a package that included Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and two first-round picks. Woj reports the Pelicans are looking for more, including four picks as part of a deal. And Ramona Shelburne reports the Lakers are, quote, quote growing increasingly pessimistic about the Pelicans' willingness to make a deal. Shannon, is this trade going to happen? Skip, I must say there's a 51% that this trade happens by Thursday. That's fair. Um, Because here's the thing. The Lakers really, really want Anthony Davis. The Pelicans know they really, really want Anthony Davis. So how much can we extract from you knowing that you really want this guy? He really wants to get uh, get to all the Lakers. And the thing is that now, okay, now there are a few other teams Outside a long-term extension with mm-hmm. Clippers, outside a long-term extension with the mm-hmm. Pelicans, yep. not the Pelicans, well, Milwaukee mm-hmm. and the Knicks. So there's three other teams that says, okay, I will sign a long-term. If y'all, we know the Bucks have nothing to offer. What are they going to give him? Give up Giannis? The Knicks have nothing. This is contingent on the Knicks landing the first, you know, the number one overall draft pick, and mm-hmm. that's Zion Williamson. Okay. Are you willing to wait that long? Mm-hmm. And the other Clippers. What do the Clippers have, Skip? Nothing. They got nothing. What you going to do, though? Tobias Harris, mm-hmm. uh, Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, nope. Garland. And so you have nothing. So we really, they know it's the Lakers. Mm-hmm. It's either the Lakers now or we're going to wait to see what's going to transpire this, mm-hmm. this summer. Yep. At the end of this, what has to happen? Magic Johnson's going to go to bed on Wednesday night, and he's saying to himself, now I can give up Kuz, Zoe, Ingram, whomever else, two first-round picks, two second-round picks. And in the morning, if I do this, I have Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Imagine Johnson's going to sleep real good. He would. He goes, hey, if, I agree. If this is what it's going to take, so be it. Mm-hmm. Magic Johnson has owned 50, 60 Starbucks. He has the Magic Johnson theaters. You do not become a businessman without taking some risk. Mm. And I, the que- another question I have, Skip, is there, has there been a deal that Magic Johnson didn't do that he wish he had done. Because I believe if he d- pa- lets this opportunity pass him by, I believe this will be a business decision that mm-hmm. he will regret. Okay. I believe he's going to do everything he possibly can. And the Pelicans just keep saying, we want more. We mm-hmm. want more. Hoping that the Lakers say, nah, this is, we can't stomach it. Mm. They've given him everything. Okay. You want Zoe. You want Kuzma. You want Ingram. Lance Stevenson. Beasley, Mm -hmm. two first-rounders, a second-rounder. I mean, you want a statue, you want a banner. What else do you want? We're giving you everything. Well, as you said, you just open your store and say, just come in. You can't have 23, but you can have everything else. Because, Skip, the thing is, when I was getting ready to – I had gotten released from Baltimore, and so I was going to be a free agent. So I knew I wasn't going to stay in Baltimore. I put my house on the market. I'd only had the house for two years. And the real estate agent said, I think we can get this. I said, okay, fine. We'll list it for that. Come to find out – I had seven people that wanted the house. Now I'm on a golf course. I think I'm on the seventh hole. Mm. Back right up to I can just. You, you don't even play golf. But I, I, I figured it was going to be a good investment, <laughs> Skip. Oh. And so I'm, I'm right back up. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the price that I listed the house for, mm-hmm. they said, okay, we'll pay you that. Well, somebody else came in and said, well, we'll get 2,500 more, 7,500 more, 10,000 more. 
Skip, it got the 15000 more than what I was asking for. I'm like, mm. wow, I got to like this. Mm. I sold the house. Mm. So the Pelican said, okay, Magic, you really, want, you really want this house? How bad you want it? Mm. <laughs> okay, well, give me this. Mm. You, you yeah. really want it? Well, give me that. Mm. And you know the Skip, they keep asking for more. Mm. How much can we extract? Mm. And Magic says, okay, look, there, uh, other than LeBron James, there is nothing that's going to turn me away from this. Mm. So either you're going to be motivated to do this deal mm. or you're not. Because it's not going to be from the fact that, mm -hmm. well, Magic wouldn't give. He's already said, Skip, yep. take the two first rounders. Okay. Take five guys from my roster, including mm -hmm. three high draft picks. Mm. Question is, will they do the mm. deal or are they balking? Mm. So I say there's a 51% chance. I can't go any higher than that, Skip, mm. because the deal is already on the table. What are we waiting for the last minute? The mm. deal is there. Jenny, I think the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp just compared himself to Anthony Davis. No, 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 story, no, 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 right? no, no, And you know what? I think at this point in time, what you did in your career surpasses what Anthony has done so far in his career. Skip, I said Am I, I sold right? the house. Nice I ain't saying nothing about no, all Well, Anthony. seriously, Anthony Davis still has a whole lot to prove to me. Yes. But the Anthony Davises of the world do not grow on NBA trees. Nope. There are very, very few. And when one comes somewhat available, you just go boom and you go all in yes. to get said player. Yes. Because said player, I think, would be much better with LeBron. I, I'm going to say it one more time that he needs LeBron even more than LeBron needs him. And I think as a dynamic duo, they would be better than Anthony paired with anybody else in New Orleans. Right. So I'm with Boogie for a while and various he's got drew holiday who's an all-star a former all-star mm -hmm. so i said from the start it is time for anthony davis to burn his bridge to new orleans a city he clearly loves and that used to love him so he burned it to the ground he did. thanks to rich paul and the public declaration we want out yes so that got done it was against his nature i think it hurt him i think it tore him apart he tried to do it privately he skip. did he did and and now publicly at least he's going out there and sitting on the bench which i think takes some guts yes yeah. right yes. And everybody's in a bad spot alvin gentry i saw last night and some clips where he was just throwing up his hands like, don't ask me. They said he's cleared to practice, but I don't know whether he can right. play or not. Do they want him to play? So it's, it's gotten messy, but it could get great for all involved, including right. the Pelicans. Yes. So let's get to this. Should Dell Demps, the GM of the Pelicans, wait until after the season? Because the day after the, I think it's the day after the finals end, it'd be like June 17th, is the first day the Boston Celtics are eligible to make an offer to the Pelicans. So, what could they offer? Well, obviously, you could go all the way to Jason Tatum. I don't think they would do that because, as we all know, Rich Paul has made it crystal, like broken glass clear, mm -hmm. that we ain't signing long-term with Boston. So, would Danny Ainge really try this for a year? And what would he risk for a year? And Anthony to think, Davis' dad says, said, I, don't I would wanna, prefer. Yeah, right. Still not. That was a little murky, the why of that, but no, whatever. Well, Isaiah. Yeah, he's a he said the guy it was on Isaiah, and he it, said that, that there's speculation it could be deeper than just Isaiah. Mm -hmm. But again, you've got Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are your two biggest chips, right? And yeah. and you don't want to obviously offer Jason Tatum. And they've got picks. They've got their own pick. They got the Kings pick. They got the Grizzlies pick, and they got the Clippers pick. So any mixing and matching of those, how much would you risk for one year if, in fact, Anthony Davis is dug in, Dad's dug in, Rich Paul, LeBron dug in? He will not play for more than one year there. Here's the thing with those picks, though. Yep. The Kings are winning too much. Okay. That pick is not gonna. That pick is not gonna have the value. The Kings the other, just clocked my Spurs last night. The They're other, pretty good, by the way. I watched are. the whole game and I was like, God, these guys got some young talent. Here's another Bagley thing. was really good last the night. The other teams yep. are losing too yep. much. Yep. Those picks are protected. They are. So now Boston got a top what? eight and a top fourteen. <laughs> okay, all good points. To me. The Pelicans cannot wait because Danny Ainge can't go too far to risk that Anthony Davis would go Paul George and spend one year in Boston and say, oh, I love it here. I think yes. I'll stay here forever, right. right? Paul George is a different dude, man. And, and again, he's a complimentary star who found a complimentary home in a very small market in Oklahoma City where he just found his comfort zone. He's the odd duck who loves to play with Russ. And the pressure in Oklahoma City yep. is not the same it's, as the pressure in, in playing Boston. in Staples in L.A. Oh, no. Or Boston. Yeah. Be, yeah, there'd be, yeah. be a lot of heat on him. Yes. 
So to me, the New Orleans situation, the, the X factor here is the new owner, who is obviously Gail Benson, God rest the soul of her husband who died, and now she's in command here, mm -hmm. and it is reported that she will trust what Adam Silver, the commissioner, sort of advises her to do. Mm -hmm. What do you think he would advise her to do? ZBLA. Thank you. For one pick. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For whatever. Get, get all you can, but send him to L.A. That's going to be that advice. Dell Demps has been through the wars, and his pride is up right now. His back is up. Because, Wasn't he there with the Chris Paul situation? Yeah, yeah. So he already yeah. know. I know. Well, I, I got it. But that was when the league ran and owned, so to speak, the, the right. Pelicans, right? Right. But in this case, Dell Demps is it's being stubbornly proud. I don't want to do this. You can't force your way out of yeah. my situation, Correct. right? And yet, I think he's going to wise up and wake up and look at what's on the table because it will get better and better. Magic's got a bottom. You know Magic Johnson. Is he not the ultimate shrewd operator Correct. in business? And this is a business decision. That's what this is. So, so you know that he sat down with Rob Palenka, Jeannie Buss, and they just drew it all up. Yep. And they said, our bottom, bottom line is here. If we, can, if we can stay up here and get it for less, 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 that would be great. But if we have to, in the 11th hour, we're going to go here. And here, to me, would be whatever of the kids. You know, all of them, right? And you're willing to take bad contracts to give them what? cap relief. Yes. So maybe a Solomon Hill contract, you're willing Which to is, take that on. Okay. But here's the thing, Skip. You're giving up these assets. These guys are still on rookie contracts. So even though you have Anthony Davis, who you obviously mm -hmm. you'll max him out. LeBron is playing on a max mm -hmm. contract. You still have space mm -hmm. for maybe not a max guy, yep. but a very close to max okay. guy. So you still can put a third guy with AD and LeBron. Which brings me to the wild card in this equation. My man, Alonzo Ball, because his father is speaking up and speaking out yet again, yes. this time saying, I want him in Phoenix. Why? And that's my question. As soon as I heard that yesterday, when it was afternoon, I said, wait a second, LeVar, you want your son to play for the worst team in the West? Not the worst team in the East where you could say, we'll rise and grow and have a mm -hmm. chance in two years. The worst team in the West, the team that has lost the most games at this point in this NBA season, and the to Phoenix lose Suns, okay? And do I love Devin? I do. I love Devin Booker before the draft, and I think he's really a stud. Yeah. DeAndre Ayton's got some ability. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we see we potential see, yeah. there. And after that, Josh I like Jackson. Josh Jackson. He's okay. Yeah. Do I like TJ Warren? He's okay. But what? What are you doing, LeVar? But why not go to New Orleans, Skip? Okay. He, now, hold on. What I can't understand with LeVar, here's a guy that says, my son is better than Steph Curry. Well, if your son is better than Steph Curry, shouldn't he be better than True Holiday? Well, again, but Drew Holiday plays two. He's, he's okay, the, that's all I've seen. Situation. Right, like it'd be a perfect fit right. for Lonzo. Exactly. In, unless, I'm throwing out another wild card. Is Lonzo sick of Kuzma? Because I know they've gone back and huh. forth and they claim to be best. Best. Or BF. Best. No, no, no. Because that between the lines of their little Twitter wars that they start, or Twitter beefs or whatever you want to call them, it, it rings of an, like real authentic mm. animosity mm -hmm. to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's something going on deeper. Is it possible Lonzo just says, I don't want to have to get stuck with him again? Mm -hmm. Like for the next three or four years? Right. I don't want to do well, this. Well, it was reported that, that Magic or someone in the legal organization asked them to cut this yeah. this out on yeah. social media going, okay. going back and forth. Right. So if you notice, Skip, we haven't really seen anything posted between the two of them taking shots at each other from afar. Well, I told you last week. If you send Lonzo Kuzma, B.I., your man, Zubots, mm -hmm. let's throw in. No, we hold it with Zubots. Stop no. putting that out there. Well, you got to go. If <laughs> no. Do you, do you want A.D. or Zubots? We Help want me A.D., out. but I'm saying right now he's not included he in any of the mix. Yeah. You love but you him. Keep, but you keep bringing that up. Keep I just throw him in there. No, why? Because it's a small price to play, pay for. But if, <laughs> if we don't have to pay that price, yeah. Skip, if you tell me something costs X dollars, I'm not going to give you $20. $20 or $40 more than what the asking price is. It's Anthony Davis. Okay, but they haven't asked for Zubats. Mm. We've given them what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say as a consolation since you yeah. were nice enough to trade us AD, we're throwing Zubats for you. Throw him in? No! <laughs> because all of a sudden, Anthony Davis becomes AD as in, 
you know, like it, the life starts yeah. here, right? Yeah. 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 But we need big zoobs. Yeah. I like zoobs. Well, I know you, he's your guy, but yeah. you got to throw him in. No, we so, don't. So <laughs> let's just do the hypothetical. What if you do throw him in? Okay. And you get okay. those four, and I don't know about Josh Hart, wherever you want to throw him right. in, he works too. Yeah. But if, if you're able to keep Julius Randle, and I don't know how the cap would all work out right. on this, and let's, throw, let's say Miritich is still there. And Holiday. obviously Drew Holiday, yes. who, who's as good a two-way guard as there is yeah. the league because oh, yeah. he can really defend yeah. at a high level. Yeah. He might I, be the best two-way guard. He just might be. I like that basketball team. I'm not saying it's Golden State. I'm just saying that's a competitive basketball team that will get nothing but better over the next three years. Well, damn, kid, we got to have somebody to play. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, if we give up Beasley, we give up – uh, Lonzo and Kuzma and Ingram and Zubox Why and Lance Beasley? Stevenson. You mean for contract purposes? Yeah, well, I'm saying that what well, he was mentioned in, in the talks. Okay. Well, so, you you got to keep somebody. But if you keep your veterans, if you still have Rondo, Beasley, JaVale. Well, at one point, Rondo was mentioned. KCP, mentioning. right? You're okay. You're good. You can pick up a couple of guys at the deadline also. You can mix and match. You got 23 and you got the other what number is he going to weigh? 23.5. Okay. Yeah. He should wear that on his jersey, 23.5, yeah. right? Yep. <laughs> well, the commissioner, he probably would allow yeah. that if he could get AD to we LA. We get AD at LA, we, yeah. we can have whatever we want. Okay. So I say this goes to the 11th hour, and I'm going to go way up on yours because I thought this was going to happen from the start. And the reason I think it's going to happen is because LeBron James has thrown his weight behind this. Rich Paul has thrown clutch sports weight behind this. So I'm going to go way, way up. I'm going to say 75% chance. Well, if you remember, Skip, it, uh, LeBron tweeted, mm -hmm. Shams, uh, Wojo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on? Y'all ain't got nothing for me? Chris Haynes, McMenamin. Chris, yeah, yeah. He did this in the second half of the Super Bowl. Yeah. Where he knew he would have a huge audience. Yeah. And I think the message was, let's do this. Let's get this done. And I think, it, Skip, for me, it's hard for me to believe that Anthony Davis was signed long-term for Milwaukee. Milwaukee isn't much larger than New Orleans. You know, that is interesting, and that's a good question. Why would Rich Paul leak the other choices? Because, Lakers, you need to be very motivated. Whatever right. it's going I, to what, take I to give he, that he up. I just wanted to light a, a bigger fire yeah. under the Lakers yes. so that they don't think they're only bidding against themselves. Right. But you're also cutting off your nose to spite your face because you're actually asking the Lakers to just unload everything for AD, leaving the cupboard half bare. The cupboard is never bare. Well, yeah. Never bare when you've uh, got 23. Well, We're well, just trying to play. Wait a second. I'm not sure you got 23. Oh, we got is 23. He, is he playing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We He's on, playing? We're we on a load management. Really? Yeah. Load management. Yeah, we're going to work our way back into you this. I haven't you, heard that a you've, lot. You've played one game in 41 days, I believe. The thing was. What's that about? We did not anticipate playing 40 minutes in overtime oh. our first game back. Huh. So, also, you could re-injure it if you tax oh. it, over-exert it so early on. Mm. We'll be there. We're going to talk about this. We'll be mm -hmm. there tonight. But I'm just saying, and like I said. Are you guaranteeing this? Yes. Well, I think you guaranteed Golden State, too, right? Uh, uh, we, maybe not. We didn't. Now, if had we played 30 minutes, oh. we could have. Because here's oh. the thing, Skip. This is what we know about athletes, especially mm -hmm. great, great, transcendent, mm -hmm. goat athletes, okay. goatish athletes. Yep. What happens if the ball game is close? Mm -hmm. Now, he played 40 minutes on Thursday night. This is Golden State. Game nip and tuck. We late in the fourth quarter. LeBron's already at mm. 38, 39 minutes mm. with four, five minutes left in the ball game. Now he's going to go 40 minutes mm -hmm. and come back two days later and go 43, 44 minutes. No, we didn't want that. Sometimes we got to protect us from us. Mm. That's, that's, what, that's what great coaches do. Mm. And sometimes LeBron, in his own interest, say, you know what? You know, he called me. He's like, Shay, what you think? What you mm. think? Uh, I was like, look at bro. <clears throat> He calls you Unc also. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody called me, Skip. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. I think my name is Unc Sharp now. Really? I'm no longer okay. standing in the shape. Everybody wow. in the Super Bowl, that's what everybody called me. Really? So he's thinking like, you know what? Uh, what you thinking? I said, bro, you got to protect you from you. Hmm. I know you want to play. Everybody keep on talking about all these other guys and everybody's doing spectacular stuff. Kyrie has been phenomenal. Hmm. Kyrie has more a double-digit assist games this year hmm. than probably all in his entire career. He. Kyrie's been phenomenal. James Harden is on another planet right now. Everybody's talking about everybody, and they forgot about it. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about that, Bron. Mm. Don't you get caught up. You told him that. Yeah, I'm telling him. I said, Bron, because sometimes we get caught up. Yeah. We're emotional at times. Mm. 
I said, but don't you worry about this, bro. Mm. Your time is going to be here in a week or two after this All-Star break. Because, mm. mm. you know, we got to be ready for the All-Star game. Because, mm. you know, we the lead, you know, lead boat getter, we the captain. Mm. So we got to make our pick, get KD out the gate. Mm. We'll get KD first. Really? Yeah. Then we're going to get Kyrie. Okay. That's how we're going to do that. <laughs> Give y'all a little sample mm. of what could have possibly been. Well, Greek Freak is going to take Steph. I'm he ain't got sure. no choice. Yep. We got the first pick. Okay. So he, he's playing Steph back because yep. Steph took him first. I get okay. all that. No problem with that shit. But I think these other teams, it's just hard for me. I don't see the pieces that these other teams have to make it. You mean to tell me you think the Clippers got a better deal than the Lakers? Mm-mm. Milwaukee has a better deal Mm-mm. that does not include Giannis than Mm-mm. the Lakers? Mm-mm. Uh, the Knicks? Who, who does the Knicks have? Mm. You don't want anybody on the Knicks roster. Mm. So this is going to get done. What's your percentage? Uh, 75. 75. 75. 75. All the way till yeah. the end, you yeah. said? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it'll go to the 11th hour. This will get done right at the trade deadline. It's 3 Eastern 3 on Thursday, Correct. right? And LeBron got, I mean, we got this trade. Bombshell. LeBron got this draft. I mean, yep. we got the Celtics. Yep. I mean, we got a lot on our plate, Skip, that we got to process. Huh. I mean, this is a lot on LeBron's plate. Yeah, the Lakers play in Boston that night. You know what? I think there is a whole lot on LeBron's plate because I don't know. Is he eating too much? Is he? I don't know. Did he fall out of shape? You know what, Skip? No, baby. well, seriously. Why, seriously? How what? can you play one game and say, I need another game off? Skip. Load the man yeah. came back. Load af- manager. The man came- Who came up with that? It's a new word. Did you come up with that? No. Yeah. The man came back, Skip, after five weeks. Yeah. We did not anticipate okay. having him play 40 minutes. Think about that, Skip. Your first game back, you play 40 minutes after mm-hmm. being out five weeks? Yeah. He's Iron Man. He's LeBron James. Unless he's not anymore. I don't know. Well, I mean, look, the age finally caught up with him. No, 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 stop. Wait, Tom Brady's still going strong at 41, just won mm. another Super Bowl, yeah. and LeBron starting to age at 34. They play different. I don't know. They play different positions. Yes. And if you are a kicker or you are a quarterback, you can do all that bands mm-hmm. and all that stretching and that pl- pliability. <laughs> uh-huh. But if you play where well, you're going to get contacted mm-hmm. on numerous, numerous occasions, yep. you better be hitting some of that iron. Mm. And you see the way LeBron is built. That's an iron body. Mm-hmm. The other guy is a tubing band body. Mm. Can you tell the difference? Mm, yes, you yeah. can. Mm. Shannon, when LeBron called you, did you guys chat about how he called Tom Brady the GOAT, or did, was that not a part of the mm. conversation? Mm. Yeah, I, I asked him not to use emojis anymore. Really? <laughs> More emojis? He, he emojis me to death. Man. Oh, <laughs> man, if, he, if LeBron is calling Tom Brady the GOAT, does that mean LeBron is actually not the GOAT that himself? Is That's not We'll break true. that down and those emojis next. No mercy. Well, Tom Brady and LeBron do have something in common. They've both been to their respective championships nine times, but one big difference, Brady just won his sixth title on Sunday, while LeBron, well, he only has won three. After Brady won another Super Bowl, LeBron gave the ultimate props to Brady with this tweet calling him the GOAT with six ring emojis. So, Shannon... Mm -hmm. What uh? What do you make of this tweet? What do you make of all yeah, this? Yeah, Shannon. What? Uh, I'm a, <laughs> huh. LeBron is acknowledging Brady's greatness. Hmm. Um, this is not a new opinion for him. If you remember, uh, after that 28-3 comeback <clears throat> in what was that 2016, hmm. he did the same thing. He, hmm. you know, tweeted something that Lebr- that Brady was the goat. He even posted almost like a salute, him saluting on the uh, uninterrupted hmm. of him saluting Tom Brady. Hmm. Um, Greatness acknowledges greatness, understands greatness. Game, as, as we say, game recognizes game. Hmm. So, you know, from one goat to another. You know what I'm saying, Skip mm-hmm. Bayless? Yeah. Some things, some, you ever see like how mm-hmm. you're walking down the street and animals walk up to one another, dogs will walk up to one another, they're like, oh, yeah, you a dog too? I'm mm. a dog. Yeah, yeah, mm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, live, you live around here? Yeah, yeah, me too. I live really? around the street. Yeah. And a big dog <laughs> acknowledges a big dog like, mm, Yeah. Mm. And so LeBron okay. is like, okay, mm. bro, you, you go. Mm. Me too. Mm. Yeah, you got a big, you know, you got a beard. Me too. Mm. <laughs> You've done things that nobody else has done. Me too. Tom Brady doesn't have a beard. No, 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 I'm just saying. No, the real Billy Goat. Mm. Billy Goat got Billy a beard. Goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah, I mean, if you grew up on a farm, you would understand that. Mm. Skip Bayless. Mm. But anyway. I should have worn your goat mask yesterday. <laughs> no, no, you didn't. Right? No, I should have. You should have. No, 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 no. I should have. <laughs> that would have been funny. That. I missed yeah. my vote yeah. on that. We got first but one. I just didn't want to rub it in. No, no, no. You, oh, yes, you did. Yeah. You, you yeah. totally wore the I totally it in. respected <laughs> but the plus, plight you were in across the table. Plus the fact, <laughs> LeBron, I mean, LeBron, yeah, LeBron does understand that when you look at Tom Brady, 
13 AFC Championship games, nine Super Bowls. Hmm. He's always in contention. And even when Tom Brady isn't in contention in hmm. the Super Bowl, yep. the AFC team that is that does represent mm -hmm. the uh, AFC probably had to beat him to get there. And LeBron James, you know, he might not always win it. Hmm. But when he was in the Eastern Conference, Skip, if he wasn't, you had to beat him to get there. Hmm. And now there's a good chance he might not be in the NBA Finals, hmm. but whoever comes out of the, uh, 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 the West hmm. going to probably have to go through him. Hmm. So in other words, he says, Well, unless he's just watching the whole playoffs from home. I don't know. It's possible. You right? you, you feel comfortable saying no, that? No, I, 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 it's I still possible. It's I not going to be that ain't easy. And that ain't possible. And the thing is, LeBron also, Skip, by any metric, when you look at Tom Brady, what he's been able to do over his career, Tom did not play particularly well. Yes, that last you let the uh, 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 the touchdown winning drive, he made some clutch throws. But throughout the entirety of the game, Tom didn't play well. He fumbled mm. the football. He threw an interception. He skipped a couple of passes. Mm. Threw but two sixty six. Oh, so, so is that the standard? Oh, is that what we're good. gonna do for Tom Brady? I got it through for five. Good. Hold on, I got it through for five oh five. I got it through for four something and mm -hmm. another four something. Mm -hmm. Now two sixty two is a gold standard for six. Don't okay. short him. Uh, okay, yards. my bad. Two hundred and sixty. If he thrown for one twenty four, you'd say. Oh, yeah. But but this is Wade Phillips and that defense, that firepower. Two sixty six is highly respectable. Go ahead. My homeboy threw for yeah. four seventy eight mm. in five tubs. Mm. That was my homeboy did. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying those skip. So so all I'm doing is I'm comparing Tom Brady mm -hmm. to Tom Brady. That's all I'm saying, Skip. And LeBron James was just giving him say, bro, from mm. one goat to another. Mm. I, 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 mm. yeah. One goat to another. Yeah. So I. I saw this for the first time, and I saw all those ring emojis. Mm, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six ring emojis. And I thought, hmm, so LeBron is saying six rings equals goat, correct? So then, I don't know why, my mind just wandered back to this guy I used to know and love, this guy named Michael Jeffrey Jordan, <laughs> and he won six rings mm -hmm. in six tries yes. with six MVPs. Yeah. And so I started thinking, well, does that mean that those six rings also equal goat in basketball? Because I, if two plus two equals Skip. six to me, I, right? No, I want you to stop that. Yeah, because I think LeBron inadvertently authorized the basketball goat being no, MJ. No, 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 yes. no. And even, even when Tom – Skip, what you're trying to do – I see what you're trying to do. Hmm. And I caught on early. Hmm. I'm glad I did. Because, hmm. see, what you're trying to do, you're trying to equate – whomever have the most rings, and mm. that's not – rings is not the determining factor mm. in Goatish because there are more players and even a more accomplished player, mm. Bill Russell, mm. has five more rings than Michael Jordan. Mm. He has as many MVPs as Michael Jordan. Mm. So let's talk about the player who has only three rings. Yes. Named LeBron James. Yes. Who fairly recently said on more than an athlete, he was sitting with his – the guys he grew up with, yep. obviously, so he was pretty full of himself because he's speaking to, he's preaching to a choir that loves him. No, yep. he, he can preach to the congregation and they accept it. And too. he talked about coming back in 2016 in the finals on Golden State from three to one down. And the quote was, that right there made me the greatest of all time. They, meaning the Warriors, were the greatest team ever assembled. And the way we came back was really something special, said the guy who thinks he's the GOAT, who is the faux GOAT, who is Real. LeBron James. Stop using so faux. So three, how, how, can, how can with a record of three and six in the finals, how can you make the case that that right there made you the greatest player ever? Because that greatest team ever assembled immediately, according, you've talked about the anecdote several times, but Draymond Green runs into the parking lot in yes. tears yes. and calls Kevin Durant and says, Man. we need you. Yes. Please come and save yeah. us, right? And when I look back at that Golden State team, Steph, Clay, Draymond, I'm thinking, greatest team ever assembled? Now that I can see it with KD, and now that I can see it with DeMarcus Cousins, I say, what? Wow, that is firepower. But, That's nuclear. But let me ask that you. team in 2016 was, was not that great. Okay. Oh, well, when he said assemble, did KD, when he joined that team the next two years, did they win 73 games? 
Are they going to win 73? Were they better? Yes. Are they going to win 73 mm-hmm. games? Mm. Because the reason well, why— I think they learned their lesson. It, it just doesn't matter how many games you well, win. Well, Michael right? Jordan has the argument says, well, we're the, still the greatest team mm. because we went 72-10 and 10 mm. and we won the title. Mm. You can't say you're the greatest team when you're 73-9 and nine and mm-hmm. you lose up 3-1. Mm-hmm. The question that I have, and I've always asked this, is it better to get swept in the first round or get knocked out before you get to the finals or the Super Bowl and have an in- intact resume in championship games, or is it better to get there and potentially not win? Because hmm. Michael Jordan got a lot of first-round exits. Hmm. LeBron, uh, Michael Jordan got a, lot of, got a lot of L's before he got to the finals. Once he broke through, how many first-round exits did he have? He had none. He had none. He should have won eight straight, but he was forced to take two years well, off. Well, I don't really see. I don't eight really, straight. I don't really that see. That would have pretty much closed the case. That right? would have, Skip. Yeah. I, I, you, well, yeah. you get no argument with Skip. We can't mm. do hypotheticals. Because I believe had Kyrie and Kevin Love not got hurt, I believe LeBron James is sitting right. prettier. So I look back at the 2016 Warriors, and if I just go asphalt on you, if I go park on you, and I say, we're at the park, and you're choosing upside skins and shirts, yeah. and you're looking at these guys, and you see little Steph and medium size size Clay and medium size Draymond, are, are they tops on your list? You're gonna pick them fast in the park? I ain't picking Kevin Love. Huh? I ain't picking Kevin Love. Well, how about Kevin Durant? Once he got there, well, everybody's gonna say, "I want that well, monster." But okay, okay right? I get all that. Okay. But, but, but Demarcus but, Cousins, I want him. But hold on, right? Kevin Durant had an opportunity to face LeBron James mm-hmm. that year, remember? Because he was in the position that the Golden State Warriors was in in the finals. Mm-hmm. He was up 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals mm-hmm. with another game on his home court. And what did he do? Well, in his Went eyes, he had the ultimate liability named Russell Westbrook. Oh. In Kevin's eyes, that was a liability. He wet the bed. Paul George, not so much. Did he wet the bed? Yeah. Okay, he yeah. wet the bed. So now, because... Well, I don't know if you could say he wet the bed. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He had <laughs> a pamphlet well, that's a terrible he, thing. He, well, he did. Yeah. Because you saw all those bricks he was shooting. Hmm. Did you not see those bricks? I saw a little point guard quote. Don't do him he, like he was, that, Skip. Now you're going to put that on Russ? Yeah, but let's look back at the 2016 finals, games okay. five, six, and seven. Obviously, Draymond Green had to get suspended or this isn't going to happen. Yeah. So he missed game five. Okay. But then what happened to Steph Curry in games five, six, and seven? Because he was a two-time MVP, yeah. right? And I look at what happened. He had seven assists in those three games to 12 turnovers. Is that good? No, not that's not good. He, he came up much smaller than he actually is right. at about six feet three But you won't tell me what right? LeBron did. Okay. What did LeBron do? Wait, wait. Steph Curry, game seven. How about this? He shot six. Six for 19 at home right. at Oracle. He shot four of 14 from three, and he made it at the free throw line one time and shot one free throw. And in the fourth quarter of that game, this is the game to win the championship at home. Steph Curry went one for six in the fourth quarter and one for five from three. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, that's what you're up against because Steph's playoff numbers have never quite lived up to his regular season. Well, they didn't that one. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the last two years, Steph has been fantastic in the play in the, in the finals. But Kevin Durant has been fantastic-er. Yeah. Yes. Okay, but Skip, you, you, you make it seem like Kevin Durant's a bum. No, I don't. I mean, he was the difference maker. Okay, he, t- he made them invincible because he is the best player on the planet. Right now he is. No, he's not. You know, LeBron used to be. No, no, no. LeBron's no. not even playing anymore, yes, but he, whatever. He'll play tonight. Well, okay. But you know, uh, you okay. know, so you how, know and I how, know. How can you have the audacity to make the contention that just because you came back on that Golden State team, that made you the greatest player ever? Because well, you, you actually admitted through the six rings that – MJ's the goat. No, he didn't. Well, that's he, what he's he, saying. Six rings equals goat. He didn't put. He didn't add no MJ. Yeah, he didn't he put did. that to Tom Brady. No, no, no. He did. In in effect, between no. the lines. Yeah. He said Brady was the goat when he mm. came back 28-3, mm. and he put the video out on uninterrupted mm. about acknowledging like one goat to another, bro. Mm. In passes, Skip, he walking by. He's like, bad. Mm. That's so, what he did. So, do you have the audacity to stand behind your claim that? LeBron James is still the basketball goat? Yeah. What, what, what has changed? What has did LeBron, changed? Did LeBron go somewhere? <laughs> but look at him. Look at him. Skip, look at it. Huh. Look at it right now. Woo! He, he doesn't hey, count anywhere. He, he, done went, he done went and put on like three more pounds, four pounds of really? all muscle. I think that was way earlier this year. Oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was lately. I don't know, Skip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy, look at them caps on the dip. 
So what I want to know Get is, did, did okay. you somehow scrub his legacy in the last month or so? No! Did you wipe out the meltdown against Dallas in the finals? No! Did you scrub and, and cleanse the meltdown in the last three minutes against my Spurs in game six, in which he had three Unforced error, turnover. Whoa, whoa! Did they win the game? Uh, because you don't, do that, you don't do that with Tom Brady. Uh -huh. When Tom Brady fumbled the ball, interception. All you said is he won the game. Mm. Don't do that, Skip. I know, but he won the game this time. Ray Allen saved the game, and then they won. Like the game. Malcolm, hold on, Skip. Uh, hold yeah. on. Okay. What about that twenty? Uh, when when Brady threw that pick six? Okay, but Brady can't play defense. LeBron can play defense. Well, his defense can't play offense. Oh. Okay, but w what did Tom do in the fourth quarter against the Legion of Boom? One hundred and twenty-four yards and two touchdowns. And what did LeBron do in overtime yeah. in Game Six? He was good, but my team. No, was he was cooked. great. No, was psychologically. Hold on. Cooked. Wait a minute. Why would they be cooked? Because remember, you got upset at LeBron James mm. for being cooked in Game One of the NBA Finals last year, so you can't. No, but but it's one thing. To, you, you took a team that was the prohibitive favorite to overtime. You got a chance. The game's going to start over, and you melt down before overtime. And the San Antonio yeah. Spurs were the favorite. Yeah, okay. Up five okay. with 20 seconds left. Okay. What happened? Well, they they coughed it up. Ooh. I will give you that. Uh. But they thought they had it because LeBron LeBricked the three to tie. Long rebound out to Chris Bosh, who kicked it sweetly to the corner. And then Ray Allen saved LeBron's legacy. But you know, you know what, Skip Bates, why you do this? I, I'm and not doing you, anything. Ray did it. You never say Malcolm Butler saved this legacy. Okay. You never say Coach Belichick saved this one. That great game, that was his game plan. But Brian Flores mm -hmm. did an unbelievable job mm -hmm. of calling this game. You never say that. You mm -hmm. never say Ben Terry. With those two made clutch field, 48-yard yeah, game clutch, winners. But, but Tom Brady completed five or six passes in a row to me, set up the field goal. Let me ask you a question. If Adam Vinatieri missed that, are we talking about those five passes that he completed? Absolutely no. not. So no. in other words, Vinatieri saved his bacon. Okay, so everybody has to do his job. So Ray right? Allen did his job. Okay. Well, now, that's beyond job. No, 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 no. That's the greatest clutch shot ever. Okay. I've never seen anything like it before. Uh, so are you saying Adam Vinatieri didn't have – Adam Vinatieri got three of the clutches kicked ever. I, I know, but it's part it, – it's what you're trying to set up to happen. Nobody was trying to set up yeah, Ray in the corner. Three. We tried to set him up for a three. <laughs> you we, are not. We're trying to – What? Hold on. We're trying to make a three because we need to tie the game. Time is running out. We're trying to get a three. How LeBron we get, took the three Okay. And missed it. Badly. Hold on. So badly that it was goodly. You didn't say anything about those three that he hit. Huh? You, huh? I what said three. You he hit three threes in the fourth quarter because he had 16 points. I don't think he hit three. I he, think he, did he did at one late. He no, he had late. three. Okay. Three. Yeah. This many. And right. guess what, Skip Bayless? They scored. They were down 10. Mm -hmm. See, that's what you feel to really like. Mm -hmm. See, I, he didn't tell you that, Jenny. Mm -hmm. They were down 10 points. LeBron James scored 16, assisted on another six. Mm -hmm. I mean, an, yeah, another six. Mm -hmm. So 22 out of 30. Had 23, oh, no, he was a six at the time. Mm. What happened the next year? Help me out. My memory fogs. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, do I, what? did Michael Jordan's team ever get blown off the floor in the finals by a record finals margin? That's what my Spurs did to LeBron's team. They did. If you've got the best player on the planet, how can you lose by a record margin what, in the finals? Because Spurs record had a margin? better team. Uh, really? Yeah. They had they, a bunch of spare parts coming off the bench. Little Patty Mills. Timmy Duncan. Uh, Kawhi. Bellinelli. Hold on. What about, what about, hold on. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that Chris Bosh and D Wade, mm -hmm. just like you said, LeBron did not fulfill his obligation mm -hmm. in the first finals against, uh, uh, mm -hmm. against Dallas? Yep. Are you saying that Chris Bosh and D Wade fulfilled their obligation in that playoffs? I thought Chris Bosh was pretty good. I can't speak for Dwayne, but, and, and LeBron just, he just cut bait with his best friend, left. He I went mean, think on. about this, Skip. 28, 7, and 6. Mm -hmm. That's what LeBron James mm -hmm. averaged in the finals. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you yeah, said yeah. the man played like a bum. I didn't say he played like a bum. He just got blown off the floor. Michael Jordan would not have allowed that to happen. We got <sighs> mentally toughest versus mentally fragile. No, don't do that. Mm -hmm. No mercy. Mari Cooper has only been with the Cowboys since October, but he showed his loyalty to his quarterback. Mari was asked if he could imagine playing with Tom Brady and said, quote, no, I don't want to play with Tom Brady. I want to beat Tom Brady. I want to play with Dak Prescott, and I believe that we can get the job done. Mm -hmm. Shannon, mm -hmm. do you like those comments from Amari Cooper? I love them. Mm. Because so many times, Skip, what do we hear? Who wouldn't want to play with Tom Brady? Mm. He said, no, 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 no. Mm. I got, I'm playing with the guy I want to play with. Mm. 
I believe in Dak. Mm. And I believe we can get to the heights in which the Patriots celebrated mm -hmm. was and had this year. Yep. I believe we can go there. And I want to go to that level with that guy. Mm. Dak's going to love that because, give you know, who wouldn't want to play with this guy and who wouldn't want to coach that guy? Mm -hmm. He's like, nah, I'm good. I'm good right here. Mm. I got the guy. Number four. Mm. I'm going to ride with him. Mm. And when now, you, we, you don't buy that, but you, you like that he said it. I mean, ugh, I do. I love that he said it. Mm. I mean, well, I mean, what was he, I mean, what was he supposed to say? Nah, you right. You yeah, think he, yeah. Do you think he believes that? No, you don't think that. I mean, come That's on. a big no, right come there. On. We just got Let, a big no. Let's be real. Yeah, that, the man, the man, just, hold on. The man takes average receivers, and now we're going to talk about this later. Got people talking about they should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm. <laughs> that is something. So we're can you about. imagine? We saw Randy Moss was spectacular before he got there. But we saw the heights in which Randy could scale mm -hmm. playing with that guy. Yep. Right. So we know we're playing with great quarterbacks. We know the extension mm -hmm. and how the levels that they can take even great players. Mm -hmm. Look at Jerry. Jerry was a great player. Jerry Rice. Yep. Jerry Rice. Mm -hmm. But playing with Montana and playing with Steve Young. I agree with that. So I love that he said that because he could have given you the old cliche, Skip. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to play with Tom Brady? He the mm -hmm. GOAT. Mm -hmm. We just said, nah, I'm good. Mm. I'm good right where I am. Mm. I got old Dak, and uh, Dak, he's a leader. If you look at all the plays that we needed to make when the rubber needed to meet the road, yep. old Dak Prescott was in the center of everything. Thank you. So I loved everything that Thank the you. were saying. Thank you. Even Thank you. Even though it's a lie. What? I love it, Jim. See? Somebody thinks it was a lie. You just had the very end. You were feeling really good about this, You know I do, Skip Bayless. I don't know it. These just might have been the greatest comments in the history of teammate comments about teammates. Yeah! Mm -hmm. And what I really loved was when the questioner dared to ask, as so many have, are you convinced that Dak Prescott's a franchise quarterback? And he's like, what? He was offended by the question. And he said, of course. You don't see that? He's a winner. I love Dak. He's a born leader. From what I can see, He's going to put it all on the line, which he does every game, yeah. every play, in every way, because he can run with the football, which if, you're going to see. If I was the reporter, Jen, yeah. I said, I'm offended that you offended that I asked you that offensive question. Yeah. You don't so, do that as do a that. reporter. Oh, no. That's not how you do it. The, rest, That's right. the, rest of the, <laughs> the rest of the quote is, in all the close games we had this year, he was the one making those big plays leading us to victory. I just like everything about him. So allow me to reiterate that over Dak's three years, he has won the second most games in the NFL. Behind who? Tom Brady. How about oh! that? Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. When How about that? <gasps> who knew? Who knew that? Is that impressive? So that, I'd say that's oh, highly it's, impressive. It's very impressive. Mm -hmm. So let me get this straight. Yep. You would rather play with the second best oh. as opposed to the best. Yes, he, he does want to play with the second best because he believes in the second best. That's his leader. That's his Tom Brady. And he truly believes that Dak Prescott can be in the Tom Brady category as far as winning football games. And who knows that who, who, who even ha has, has kept touch with the fact that Dak Prescott in his first three seasons leads all of football in game-winning drives with 14. I'm talking about in the regular season. Obviously, Tom Brady just won his sixth ring with his sixth game-winning drive in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. overtime of Super Bowls. But who knew that over the first three years of Dak's career, his 66.1 completion percentage set a record for NFL quarterbacks? Who knew that? Well, you did. I, I did, but I'm the only one in the world who knows that. And, and so that brings us to what we just witnessed on Sunday night. It is still painfully clear to me that Dak Prescott is clearly better than Jared Goff. And I told you this before those two teams met. Well, we and then I got to sit here yesterday for two and a half hours and hear you call Jared Goff's Super Bowl garbage and worse. Hold on. Chicken poop. Yeah. Right? But guess what, Skip Bayless? How many years has uh, Dak Prescott been in the NFL? Three. How many years for Jerry Gone? Three. And when is Jerry? When is uh, Dak Prescott getting to the Super Bowl? Mm. Well, I don't know. Maybe next year. Okay. I give him a shot. Because you told me yeah. that 
Zeke is better than uh, 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 Todd Gurley. Yeah. His offensive line is better than the Rams' mm-hmm. offensive line. Yeah. Uh, Dak Prescott is better than and, and Brandon. I, I, not I did not say the hold offensive hold line's hold better. Hold I did that, not say that. That uh, Amari Cooper is better than Brandon Cooks? He is. Okay. Yeah. But well, I, they got two Amaris on their team. So right? why, why, um, why did not in the Super Bowl? Well, okay. So Jared Goff had boy genius calling his plays up to the Super Bowl, and then you said he was chicken poop in the Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know if he lost his nerve or what. So what? Lost so, his way. So, Scott, so a- I'm going to warn you one more time that next year, my man Dak Prescott is going to have his Sean McVay named Kellen Moore. If they let Kellen Moore call the plays next year, you'll see the same quantum leap from Dak Prescott that you have seen in the regular season from Jerry. I have ideas here. Kellen Moore, Shemar Moore, Mm -hmm. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Cowboys miss the playoffs. Mm. Are you going to do it to yourself again? Right now? You, Skip, you really want you to know do how, this? Skip, you you know did how, it last year, on, and you paid finish. six cases you paid let, on that. Let me, let you me, want to do it again? Hold on, I'm let, welcoming let, this. Let me hold really? on. Clear yeah. me out. You know how you guys do it. Mm. Odd number, even number years, playoffs. Yeah. 14, 16, yeah. 18. Okay. Odd number of years. So it's, Fitting, it, it's, ri- it's written in historical stone that next year will be doomed, right? Yeah. So somehow the NFL gods have decreed next year you're doomed, right? Okay, do you, would you like to bet upon that, please? Two cases? Two cases. Let's Ooh. make it five. Two. Why only two? Two. Put your do where your two. mouth is. Two cases? Kellen Moore. All right. Kellen Herman. Moore. I've... You can have Herman Moore. I'm witness. Yeah. You want Shemar Moore? You know him? Yeah. Good old <laughs> actor. All right. Yeah, yeah good dude. Man. Good brother. Yeah. You're not even giving give him a shot? A shot at what? Huh? It's Changing flu season. The well, it's flu season. You, you need a so shot of any. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's flu season. Mm. So that's the only shot you get. You yeah. want the two cases, yes or no? Mm. Yes. Oh, do I want I want five. Yeah, okay. I two want cases. five. You Thank you settled. very much. R- write that down. You're going to be book. You're going to be sorry you made yeah. this. Okay. You're going to be sorry, Skip. Baby. Well, that's what you told me for a whole year last year. And what happened? And then you kept doubling the down. The Eagles, you lost the, six cases the, the, on this. The Eagles, but look, the Eagles spit the bit. Yeah, the Eagles have landed mm. the with Eagles a thud. Bit. And I don't know. Yeah. Walking to them, I, I, I'm starting to hear some things. No, I know. We're going to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, that mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not really happy. So Dak yeah, Prescott beat walking to him twice last year. That's interesting. And when I compare the three-year careers of Goff and Dak, Dak has a QBR, this is scale 0 to 100, of 69 over three years. That's his total QBR. Jared Goff is at 45, and these two have faced each other, Goff and Dak. And what the record? Yeah, but wait what a second. What the record? How about when they've faced each other? What has happened each time? And I'm going to include the preseason game, which was their first meeting right here at the L.A. Coliseum. Uh, game Jared Goff one. didn't start. Well, he played in the so, game, and no. he stunk in the game. Don't worry and, about that. And, That's Jeff Fisher. Okay, it was Jeff Fisher. Yeah. But, it's like a whole different Yeah, Jared, it's a, a whole different. Okay, but Dak Prescott was special that night. You could just see okay. it. Well, I tell Eric you what Dickerson, was, who's going to join I us later, you. he was there, and he just said he was in awe of what I tell Dak you, did I tell you night. when Dak had, wasn't yeah. special, mm-hmm. when they played in the regular season mm-hmm. two years ago. He was And special. when they played last year yeah. in the division, this year in the division. So thank you for bringing up that regular season game two years ago. Yes. Dak's QBR was 81, golf 46 in that game. Mm, not, not that good. And then in the playoff game this year, Dak had an 84 QBR here at the Coliseum on that fateful Saturday night. And Jared Goff had a 57. So he's outplayed him all three no. times a lot. Hold on. Skip, yeah. QBR doesn't tell you anything because yeah. in the AFC. Yeah, you know it doesn't. You know why? Because the Rams ran wild on my defense. 273 yards rushing. Was Goff doing that? He did have one rush that killed him at the end of the game. But Hold on. You remember the AFC Championship game? Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes boys had a higher QBR than mm-hmm. Tom Brady. He did. Who won the game? Tom Brady. The, okay, at the end of the day, that's what we count. We count them doves. And yeah, but, Dak has no doves okay, but, but against Tom, the Rams. Tom Brady was having to overcome a flammable, torchable Belichick defense that gave up 24 points in the fourth quarter of that game. And then what did Brady say? I guess I got to do more. Well, Three straight been, third and ten should have It should have been 28 nothing wow. had Tom Brady not made that goofball play in the end it was zone. a bad play. Okay, that's you know, 21 he is nothing. Human. He is human. Okay, then. He was still great. And even you admitted he was great. I, even I think you came in the next day and said, I give it up. I right? did. You did. But I just – but. I gave it up to him. Mm. But what you're trying to do is say QBR and all this and all that when Jared Goff teams keep winning. That's what they keep doing. They keep winning. Jared Goff got exposed on Sunday night. Okay. You could see right through him. You could see what he's made of or not made of. 
Dak Prescott is made of tougher stuff well, than Jared Goff. Hold on. He just is. Does the Patriots do the Patriots play the Cowboys next year? Mm-hmm. Mm. They do. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, let's go, Pay. Let's yeah. go, Tom Brady. In Fox let's Fox go. Fox. Oh! In I got, Fox I got all the cases you want. I'm taking none. Uh, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I'm taking none. No, 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 don't do that, Skip, baby. Well, I can't do that. What it's, you mean you can't? In the goat's house. No, no, no. Yeah. They got to, hold on. Hmm? In order for you to be, the, if you, you, that guy that you said he is, mm-hmm. you go to the goat house mm. and you eat the goat food. Mm. I'll bet you two cases right now that Tom Brady plays past next season because you, you're <laughs> dug in that he's, I was, last I was, year. A, I was a doing this. Ooh. Uh, Wait, uh, game uh, or? Patriots. Are you going to accept? Huh? I don't know, Skip Bayless. I don't know if I've ever, ever in my long-legged life rooted for the Patriots. Come on, Tom Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady, first. if you got a 500-yard game in your mm-hmm. pocket, yep. can you please pull it out? Mm. We've got some time to Ooh, forward Skip to Bayless. this Game one. recognizes I'm, game. I'm wearing a 12 jersey the whole week. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing a Brady jersey the whole week. I'm going to mm. get my... Uh, I got a Patriots helmet mm. at the Pro Bowl from Big well, Coast. Oh, it's okay really? because I sleep in a four jersey every night. Well, so I it. got you there. Did you really? Uh, he gonna make no. He uh, uh, he gonna make you throw it away. Huh? That's he gonna make incredible. you throw it away. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady gonna make you throw. Th- Tom Brady gonna make you throw that four away. It's just one loss. No, 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 no. So no. you go twelve and four. Mm. It's okay. I figured we you should get to show on the road. Maybe really. We just bet two. They're gonna miss the playoffs. I'm good. No, we gonna get some. Y'all ain't going no twelve. Y'all ain't getting no twelve wins. Kellen Moore, change life. Let's get back to a game that is actually happening tonight. Yep. Will we see yeah. LeBron back in action, or will he continue his load what? management? That's a load of- We'll discuss <laughs> that new one next. No mercy. Well, the Lakers start their four-game road trip tonight in Indiana, and LeBron is listed as probable. He sat out Saturday's loss to the Warriors for what is being called, quote, load management. He made his return last week, played 40 minutes in the overtime win against the Clippers. Shannon, what is going on with LeBron? You got the inside? Mm. Load management. (laughs) Which means we're gonna manage the load what in load? which he has oh, to carry. It mm. Okay. Uh, he left. They were in the four seed, and now they're in the ten spot. Mm. That's the load. Mm. Mm. Need you to stop this foolishness, Skip. I baby. haven't even said a word. <laughs> yet. Yeah, Skip. He and the Lakers must be safe. Mm. Skip, if he re-injures this groin, you know mm. it's over. The season for the Lakers is over. If LeBron James gets injured again, it is over. Done. Finished. Kaput. Hmm. Benito. Hmm. Any of the other words I leave out, Jenny? Yeah. Fini. Yeah, Fini. It's over, Skip. What was that? I don't even know. That's French. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, hmm. no. We're going to be cautious. Hmm. And if we need to be overly cautious, that's what we're going to do. Hmm. Missing five weeks, coming back, playing 40 minutes, was not the scenario we envisioned. Mm. So we rested. Mm. We're going to make sure LeBron James is right for this four-game this four mm. game East Coast win. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to do this thing right. What, what a great message the phrase load management sends to the rest of the team. Like he's carrying all of you guys. Yeah. Right? Have you seen what they were, the record is without yeah. LeBron? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's it. That so you want to rub all their noses in it? You, you want to just, like, try to humiliate them with load management? Hold on, Skip Bayless. Mm. That's news, leadership. News flash. Mm. You hadn't been to the playoffs since you guys been there. Mm. You hadn't been close to the playoffs. And LeBron James had you in the fourth spot. Mm. Now, since he's left, you remember the 83 Grammys Michael Jackson racked up? Mm. He moonwalked. Mm. Well, that's what they were doing while he was away. Mm. Moonwalking. Mm. Woo, five, woo, mm. six, woo, seven, mm. eight, nine, ten. And mm. here we go. Mm. That's where they are now. Mm. So you're right. It's load management because LeBron James has been had to carry a Herculean load. Herculean Herculean. Hmm. Those kids probably all went out. And yeah, I want them out. They all went I want them out. Be gone this shop yesterday. Yeah. Can you imagine Tom Brady ever resorting to load management? That, well, no. first of all, because he's not going to miss a game anyway. Imagine yeah. if they set up all the rules that when you drive the ball, nobody can touch you. Because that's what Tom mm. Brady is in the pocket. Has anybody ever carried a bigger <laughs> load than Tom Brady just carried to a team? LeBron James. Oh, really? LeBron James. Huh. Did you see that team he took to the finals? <laughs> Where did I skip? Dead last. Yeah. That last. But he got to play in the Eastern Conference. I will give you, Brady gets to play in the AFC least, but then he has to play in the AFC playoffs, and that's hard.
Uh, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, the AFC, what well, the Eastern Conference is mm-hmm. hard. But mm-hmm. anyway, Skip Bayless, I need you to stop this. I need you to stop this because you know, look at the load that LeBron James has had to carry. Mm-hmm. He took that team to the finals. Mm-hmm. Look at this. I, I get it, Skip. I get it. But you want him to come back and just pick right back up and start playing the number of minutes that he mm-hmm. played? Yep. That probably would have led to him tweaking that groin anyway. Mm, maybe. It sounds to me like number 23 is now on the number two program, as in that quitter up in Toronto who now just plays. Don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. No, that's so ugly. Am I right? It? No. Am I right? No. The guy up in Toronto has basically said, you know what? If I'm a little tired or a little sore or we had overtime, I, I think I need four or five days off. That's what he's doing. And you know what he thinks in his heart of hearts? He doesn't care what the GM says or the coach says because they need him. They do. They are willing to sit back and fold their arms and bite their lip and just say well, whatever guess, you want. Guess what? And the Spurs were willing to do the same mm-hmm. thing because that's why they let him take 73 games off and they still <laughs> wanted him back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now what? It's good work if you can get it. It is. And you can get it. Yeah, LeBron's he, well, got right, it now. Well, hold on, Skip. Right now he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Mm-hmm. That bag is out there. Hmm. He wants the bag. He's going to secure the bag. He was not going to be a – Skip Bayless, hmm. well, I think it's very safe to say, hmm. Isaiah Thomas, the little Isaiah Thomas, mm-hmm. will never, ever secure the bag that he would have gotten had he not got injured that hip. You know that, and hmm. it's sad. Hmm. It's a very – it's a cautionary tale. Hmm. That's a whole different story, and I do feel sorry for him, but I don't feel sorry for these two because now LeBron has played one game in 41 days and counting because he's just probable for tonight. We, we didn't get a go. He's a full go. We got a probable, which leaves a slight question, right? Yeah. He could get out there in pregame and maybe even walk through, for that matter, and say, it's just a little tight. I just don't well, how many risk ga- it. How many games has mm. he played mm. in the last decade? Mm. If you go to eight finals straight, mm, okay. if you play in two Olympics. That. I just thought he was Iron Man. And by the way, before we let this go too far into the past, Saturday night, I told Ernestine, you know, I got to be back. It's 530 Pacific time mm-hmm. for the LeBron game. I said, I just, we're going to go eat. And I said, I got to get back for 530. And I sit Man, down Man, nobody want to go eat at 330 in the afternoon. <laughs> well, that's what we had to do because it's the way I stay on East Coast time. I told you, that's Man. 630 for me. Ernestine, I, was leave, at 830. I leave this joke at home. I go out and eat by myself. I would take my sister. Well, I, say, I was there home. and I plopped down on the couch and she plopped next to me because she will watch NBA games. Okay. And she likes to watch LeBron games. She's Who wants to eat dinner at 3 30 in the afternoon? And all of a sudden, I hear the big announcement from, I think it was Mike Breen on ABC, oh, yeah. who said, No LeBron. To, uh, what? No LeBron at Golden State? Well, at Come Ernest, on. Ernestine should have made what? you get back up off the couch and go Time back to go out. out. Yeah. <laughs> she said, Do you want to watch Jeopardy? <laughs> oh. yeah, we tape all the Jeopardies. <laughs> so we did. We watched a couple of Jeopardies in the first oh. half, and then I watched some of the second half, and it was like, it's not a good uh, sign next. if you're watching Jeopardy. But I was very concerned about this because it was also reported on ABC that LeBron was actually at the arena during the game, but that he was going to stay in the locker room yeah. for treatment. And I'm like, what are you doing? You have the highest basketball IQ in the NBA on this planet. I've always told you, I give you that. Why wouldn't you share it with your teammates during the game? Why wouldn't you go out and help coach or inspire or just whisper in ears? You well, know, that, think about this. Well, you were that. upset at first that he wasn't even traveling. Now he's traveling. Okay, so why would you stay in the locker room to get treatment? You got treatment for three hours before the game. And How we, much treatment can you get? Uh, we need that treatment. Oh, we yeah. get that thing 24, 24 hours. 24 hours yeah. treatment? Yep. Come on. We jump on it right oh, away. Oh, hell. What did LeBron say are, after are, every game, Skip? You know, get my treatment. Yeah, it it feels like he is trying to distance himself from this group. And maybe I don't blame him. Maybe he's just given up on this group because he is convinced much of this group is going to New Orleans. Mm. It's highly possible. We're not giving up because there's still there's a a small chance that he'll have to continue to play this season with this group. So that's going to be tough, man. If that happens. If, if all these kids are going to go through the ringer, the media ringer. That's a part of it, part of the business. It's the cost of doing business. You know what you signed up for. Whew. So it feels like LeBron is banking on Anthony Davis and banking on the fact that the big push is going to come post All-Star break when they start off, what's the date? I don't know. It's, 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 it's Houston. They got Thursday. Houston at home, right? February okay. 21st. So that's when the season is going to start for LeBron and his new partner, 
AD. 23.5 uh, AD. 23.5. So this is going to be a rocky road. They're literally on the road for the next four games because that team is going to be distracted to the point of fractured because – Everybody's like, am I here? You, I, I don't here? care. You're getting yeah. a paycheck, whether yeah. you're here or there. Do your job. Don't worry about – do not worry about circumstances you cannot control. Mm. Well, LeBron should have done his job on Saturday night and sat on the bench and helped coach because his coach was under fire right after the game, reportedly, and he got into it with uh, – And it makes it so easy. With Beasley and JaVale, and right? Lance. Yeah, that's why we I, put Lance him said, "Don't put him in there." He said, "I wasn't part of that." He, well, he, I, I don't think he was. I think it was. I Beasley hope he wasn't because I like I like Ogie. It was also Lance. reported that LeBron just sat and watched this, like he didn't intervene. What do you want him to do? Okay, LeBron didn't coach LeBron a player, huh? See, I thought he was a leader. Nah, huh? Nah, no. Yeah, he is a leader. Yeah, of himself. Yeah. The, the, the players need to understand. There, there's a saying that says, "The mind will never be at peace hmm. if you constantly worry about things you cannot control." Hmm. These players worrying about this, they can't control it. Is They're it in no possible, situation. Is it possible post-All-Star break that LeBron will not only have a new partner, but he will have a new coach? Is that possible? I'd it, say it's highly possible. Anything's possible. Yeah. They put man on the moon. Who, Jason Kidd maybe? I, it's hard for me to see an outside coach coming mm -hmm. in the middle of the At season. This point. Normally, if someone was in the, or on the bench. Brian Shaw. Brian Shaw. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember... Um, the year uh, Greg Popovich yep. fired Hill mm -hmm. and took over. Okay. Are that a situation? Is Magic going to fire? Magic's going to coach? No, I'm just oh. saying. That was the only time oh. that we saw someone that wasn't on the bench to begin oh, with. Okay. And oh. I think take over the coaching okay, staff, after, take over the head coaching Ma job. Magic tried to coach once upon a time, and it did not work. Skip, the greater you are as a player, it's harder no to good. coach. Yep. It, it, it ran Larry Bird up out of it, there. It, although he was a really good he, coach He was a really a good coach. He he's was. Like, and then he's like, oh, I can't. Yeah. I just can't. Mm. And now these Fortnite playing guys, yep. all they want to do is play Fortnite oh, and, and, and get the IG followers up. Yeah. Nah. Jason Kidd was pretty good for a while. <laughs> yeah. And he was a great player, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The he whole, wasn't, no, no, no. That era. He was, but, but Magic and Bird no, is what I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking about. Those, I'm talking about those well, types. I, I yeah. got you. I agree. All right, guys, we are going back to the Super Bowl because by this point, we all know the Rams did lose. But here's the thing. Eric Dickerson still had the guts to show up today. So that's a good sign. But ED, uh, you're going to have to buckle up for this next one. No mercy. Well, the high-powered Rams offense got shut down by the Patriots on Sunday. They scored a season-low three points. What? To three lose points? the Super Bowl. Three? Yes, it was Did three. Did you say three? Three. Jared Goff struggled three? big time. Sean McVay said he got out coached. Oh. We're joined by the Rambassador, Eric Dickerson. This is a shocking moment. I am so proud of my friend Eric Dickerson for showing up today. But he is unaccompanied for the first time here because what happened to many ED? He, he mad. He, I, I couldn't even get him up, really? up this morning. He just said, I, I, he just said, I can't go. <laughs> I said, I'm too hurt. I can't go. He's yeah. not over it. Yeah, he, not, he can't get over it. Well, but I'm over it. Okay. Well, I have to ask you, Eric, what happened to your Ram Sunday? Let me ask you. Did, did, have, did any of you ever see the movie Face Off with Nicolas Cage? I did. Yeah, John yes. Travolta? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's, this is one when one fan said, and I, it's perfect. He said that I think Jeff Fisher coached that game and put his face on his <laughs> at Sean McVay. <laughs> oh. That's how bad our offense was, mm -hmm. I, I, I've got to say. I mean, i got to congratulate Robert Kraft and, and the Patriots because I, I told you, I, I, I think a lot of Robert Kraft. And... I'm not a big fan of saying someone is the best or the greatest of anything. Because I think you have to go in eras. You know, who do you like? I, you know, I, my guy was O.J. Simpson. You know, some love Jim. That, that was my guy. Right. But I've got to say, Bill Belichick is the greatest coach that I've ever seen coach mm. football. Wow. I just, I got to give it up. I mean, that, and that's mm. just, the, that, that's the facts. Um, you know, in that football game, I, I talked to Todd Gurley uh, the night before the game. Sent him a text, you know, see how he was feeling. He's Eric, I'm 100%. I'm, I'm ready to go. And I talked to Richard Dent. Hall of Famer, Ricky Jackson, and my good friend Harvey Armstrong that I played with at SMU. Mm -hmm. All of them asked me the same question. Why didn't they run Todd Gurley? What was up with that? I mean, I just don't understand why we didn't run the football. That is one of the things that has kind of perplexed me all year. Sometimes with all these, all these new coaches, they don't want to run the football. They get caught up in, in this newfangled offense. Oh, we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to spread it out. We're going to do all these kind of things. And 
I just didn't see the same Rams football mm. team. I really didn't. And, and was it disappointing? Yes, it was. Um, you know, you punt the ball eight times. Uh, we never got in the red zone once. We had to, to score, we had to kick a 53-yard field goal. We just never got on, on, on pace. And, and, you know, I got to give that credit to Bill Belichick. I mean, he did to the Rams what no one else was able to do, even when we playing bad. And to me, it was just a, a game that we, we never got on track. Uh, and we got never got on track because of Coach Belichick and and Sean McVay. I got to say, as a young coach, you know, he was playing checkers and and Bill Belichick was playing chess. You know, it, that that's that's what it looked like. And yeah. and for me, you know, it's frustrating. But I, I got to say, that that's why I'm glad I don't play because I slept great that night after the game. <laughs> now, if I was playing, I I couldn't slept at all. Yeah, exactly. You know the feeling. Yeah. You, you, you play every no, play over no, your he head. No, he doesn't know yeah. the feeling. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I haven't lost <laughs> the Super Bowl, but, 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 but you, you, lose, you, you, lose, you, you, yeah. you lose sleep. You just yeah, lose sleep. You, you, you can't come. You're just like, man, maybe, maybe I should have did this. Maybe I should have did that. But I, I have to give it up to, to Coach Belichick and the Patriots, and they, they, they beat us. Mm. I'm disappointed that Sean McVay didn't make any adjustments. I saw no adjustment. He just came in with a game plan, and when that game plan didn't work, he just tried to make it work. Skip, uh, uh, skip. E.D., you remember when you was growing up and you say, Coach, man, they got like 10 guys at the line of scrimmage. They, they ain't going to work. Make it work. Make it work. <laughs> make it work. <laughs> no, no, it's not going to work. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what Todd Gurley says. Todd Gurley was not healthy. Todd Gurley had three rushing attempts against the Saints. Mm. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley didn't have the explosiveness. Mm. That 18-yard run, that's a 30-yard run when Todd Gurley's healthy. Todd Gurley is more explosive than what I've seen him over the last Are you two buying years. that? I'm Hurts? not buying that. I'm not either. I'm not buying that. Sorry. No. I'm not buying that. I just, you know, he, he, he said to me, he said, I'm healthy. You know, you know, Shannon, how this, this time of season? Yeah. You know, your body's wore out. It's, just, it's not the same. How much time to ask you a question, E.D.? Did you ever ride the bike, stationary bike, when you was a player? No, we didn't have them things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yeah, I mean, Todd Gurley spent more time on the bike than he did on the field. I, I know. That's, that's, Eric Dickerson. That's, that's what bothers me. Did you me. ever see a running back lose his confidence? Did you ever see a head coach suddenly decide late in the season, I got this other guy, and I love this other guy, and I'm going to ride this other guy, and all of a sudden your stud, your star, is not sure who he is anymore. He came in tippy-toeing to me, like he wasn't hitting the holes with the authority and the confidence he used to. And again, maybe he's protecting the injury a little bit, but I, again, not a great back. Hey, I've I, seen back. I've I seen. Know. I've seen players lose confidence, I, but, I told but you, not great players. That one, I, I, I don't. Hey. Think, I don't think he lost confidence. I think that the one thing is, is sometimes these coaches they'll they'll they want to they want to try this two back thing. That's the oh, thing to do. Yeah. I got to give the Dallas Cowboys credit. Zeke Elliott, when he's healthy. He's going to carry the ball. That would be like playing LeBron James in eight minutes of the championship game in game seven. Yeah. You're like, what's wrong with you? You're not hurt? Nope. No. Why, why, why are you sitting? No, no, no. I mean, that's what no, I don't it's, get. It's something like not playing Malcolm Butler the whole Super Bowl? Like the whole the Super whole Bowl? The whole Super Bowl? Yeah, yeah. maybe. I don't okay. know. Something like that. And then the, it's given the offensive line. Mm. ED, they didn't really do anything. All they did was run a couple of stunts, and the Rams' offensive line couldn't put it up. Jared Goff was under pressure. He was under more pressure mm -hmm. on Sunday than I had seen Jared Goff at any point in time this season. And it was it was in the running game. Mm -hmm. They basically took five guys and shut down the running game. game. They didn't have any run blitz. They weren't crowding the line of scrimmage. They just said, we're going to stop your run with five guys up front, six guys up front, to leave the back end to take away the passing game. Mm. And they shut it off. I was so disappointed because the Rams, you were at NFL honors, the Rams were voted best offensive line in football. Mm -hmm. They did not look like the best <laughs> offensive line ED on Sunday. No. Mm. Not in the run game and definitely not in the passing game. So I was very disappointed. Mm. Somebody, Maybe the Patriots didn't give them enough tells across the line <laughs> of scrimmage, right? Remember the Cowboys? Exactly. Mm. Let me ask you this. If somebody would have told you ED, they're going to hold the New England Patriots to 13 points, what would you have said? Oh, we're going to win. We're going to win. 13 we're points. Win. That's what I'm saying. We're going to win. If you, you're right. If you have a, I'm saying, what, what do you I'll think Tom that. Brady said one year ago on that night? If you told me going into this game, I'm going to score 33 points, we're going to win big in yeah. this game, right? Exactly. And Belichick gave up 41. So, is it my turn? It's your yeah, turn. Go ahead. Your turn. Mr. Dickerson, I am not going to gloat today. I am not going to rub it in. But yeah, I you did, are. I did try to warn you. I did try to. And the truth is, in the very end, what happened in that football game was you got Bradyed. Everybody gets Bradyed in the Super Bowl because he's now won six of them with six fourth quarter overtime game winning drives. That's astoundingly great. That's all time clutch. And he did it to you again.
albeit against, this is the other part of the equation you left out. Your defensive coordinator was really good in this game. Really good. Whew. Right, really good. He had the goods. He's mm-hmm. had Tom Brady's number. He had his number in that 2015 the AFC Championship mm-hmm. game. And he had firepower in the middle of his defense and coming off the edges. And he had two shutdown corners. And they did a, a, a masterful job of containing Tom Brady until it was time. And finally, Tom Brady cracked the code with four straight pass plays that just got him. He just, he just found the openings. He got Gronk on Ebukam, and then he got Julian over the middle on an option route, and then he throws it outside to Rex Burkhead, and then he gets Gronk up the seam with, I thought, the signature pass of Tom Brady's postseason career. Because the more I watch the Gronk pass, it's, it's, he had to drop it down the chimney among three of your guys. They covered it pretty well. And Gronk made a nice catch, and that was the football game. That was, the, that was it. it. It wound up like that. I can't give Bill Belichick nearly as much credit as you guys because I discredit your young head coach. You got to figure that out. And I discredit your young quarterback because I got to tell you, he went deer in headlights in this game. He got overwhelmed by the magnitude. He got off to a rocky start and he could not get it back. His confidence got shattered in this game. And and I'm giving him credit because he did throw the two balls to Brandon Cooks that could have changed this game, especially the second one. Brandon Cooks should have hung on Should have caught that. And then we might be looking at an overtime game. I still think you would have gotten Brady in the overtime game. But in, in this case... Uh, Bill Belichick didn't do anything shockingly clever where I said, oh, I I didn't see that coming. They played defense just the way they played it against the Chargers and just the way they played it at Kansas City. They did mush rush all night. They've been doing it the whole playoffs where they just mill at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. And they're all standing up and you're like, well, who's going to do what? Well, you just got to figure it out. And you should have figured it. You had two weeks to figure that out. Right. Right? Right. And you're right. They, They didn't do a lot of run blitzes. They just knew we are not going to let them bounce this outside. And every time Gurley, he bounced, he got two of them. One, the holding call really killed you on that one yeah, drive. One, yeah. And that was a phantom holding call yeah, on John Sullivan. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, they held your run in check. And they put the game back in your young quarterback's hands. And to use your word yesterday, he was, he was garbage, man. He had a long, <laughs> hard game. And you know, Edie, you know anytime a team that can run the football like the Rams can, you want their quarterback to win it. I'm not letting CJ, I'm not letting Todd Gurley win this game. Like a la like they did against Dallas. I'm not going to let that happen. If you if Coach Belichick says, I'm not going to let your best weapons beat me. Now, if you beat me with your, Jerry Goff, if you throw 350 yards and three touchdowns, I can live with that. But I tell you what you're not going to do, you're not running for 200. Well, I, and I, I agree. And, and to me, we, we only ran the ball, only 17. Ran about 17 times. I mean, that's, not that's, even that's frustrating. I, I, I have to give the Patriots credit. The Patriots stuck to their run. We, even the one fans, I'm saying, you know what they did. You, you, they did. When you stick to the run, do. because yeah. one thing with yeah. the run, the, it really is, then the play action really works. We do play action. It wasn't. They're like they. They not running the football. You can't run the ball. You getting one yard. Yeah, we not (laughs) running. They not. They don't. They. We never committed to really running the football, and that has been the word with me with Coach McVay. Sometimes he just gets away from it too soon. Wants to get too fancy, and to me that hurt us in that football game. What did he do to my Cowboys? Oh, he ran. Oh. Ran it to death. And, and I was so impressed because he loves to throw the football, but it was working, and he stuck with it. But he, and he ran them off the field, he did. 273 but, yards. But you remember, E.D., late in the season against the, uh, the Chiefs. I think Gurley only had 11 carries. Okay, you can abandon the run. If you're throwing the ball for 350, 400 yards, okay, fine. That's different. But when you're not completing passes – or they're hitting your quarterback. You got to change it up. You got and and you got Tyre Gurley back there. He made the most money. He's the highest paid running back in NFL history, and he get ten, 10 carries. carries. That's what I'm saying. And, and those ten wasn't it's like, a, like it's like it's like like you know I, run, I know a running back. You got to get into a rhythm. Yeah. You, you can't carry the ball yeah. two three, times. Yeah, two you here, the ball, three, three here. Yeah. You know one. You got to get in that four. Give me five. Give me six. See, and see, he was going series yeah. without playing. Without playing. I, well, it's because yeah. C.J. Anderson went from blessing to curse because McVay fell in love with him enough that he was at least going to share the load, right, on Sunday night? Yeah. And, and, and that was and, – and, Well, and, if it was working like they did in, in the final two games and against Dallas, okay. But, but I got to go with something. Look, I got to go with a hot hand. You got to go with the horse that got you there. 
And I, and I believe that. You know, you Todd should have been getting that ball enough, enough. You know what? Like I said, if we if he'd have carried that ball 25 mm -hmm. times and we'd have lost that football game, I said, you know what? I'm good with that. That's interesting. I'm good with that. Yeah. You know, I think of the Cowboys. If you say Z carried the ball 28 times mm -hmm. and we lost the football game, I'm cool right. because that's our best guy. Yeah, but you that guys gave us the best chance. Suffocated him. I mean, well, he got what 47 yards. But, but he didn't. But he still he, had 20 carries. He had 20 carries. Yeah, still had 20. And I'm, I'm you know, okay. I mean, but y'all y'all defense couldn't stop our offense. So that, it, it, that's what it is. So my big picture question is, how good is Nick Foles? Because one year ago Sunday night, <laughs> he put 41 on Belichick's defense. So how good is he? Is it that much better than Jared Goff and McVay? He was in that he, game. I'll say he was in that <laughs> game. You know, yeah. the, the the play calling was really really suspect. I just got a call like I see it. It was. <laughs> Really bad, really bad. And Jared Goff, he got hit a lot. I mean, yeah, you know, a yeah, young quarterback, I mean, of course he's going to look like a dead. No, no quarterback wants to get hit. Mm -hmm. And he's getting hit, he's getting rushed. The interception, the, he, he's got to step into mm -hmm. going to take the hit, get it over the defender's head. Yeah. He should have never threw that ball. They came with a zero blitz, yeah, and yeah. the guy's off. Yeah. You can't throw the goal ball if the guy's playing 10 yards off. Mm -hmm. And Deron Harmon was in his face. Yes. And yep. he couldn't step through. And with Patrick Chung, when I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, no, I thought you no, 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 no. Everyone was talking, right? Well, now we got a shot. Yeah, now we can it. throw the ball. But, hey. So what? Are they back next year? Of, of course. The round bounce will be back. I'll be, yeah. we, we will be back. You know, you turn the corner. We'll, 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 we'll be back when your Cowboys get back. I bet you that. Do you do they play the Cowboys? Because they won the division. Yes. They play next year. The Cowboys. Where they play, where they play at? I think it's a find out for cherry world. Oh, y'all gonna take minutes. the L regardless. It doesn't matter. Y'all take the L, L. anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, they play the Patriots too. Cowboys mm -hmm. play the Patriots. Really? Oh, we know what they gonna happen with mm -hmm. that. What are you gonna be? Oh, he's a cowboy. Week. He won't even give me a Oh, yeah, he won't be, won't be Brady great that day, then, will you? A lot of no, time. I, I, I'll, I'll take a case on my Cowboys against the Rams. I'll take it right I now. I think the Rams might struggle next okay, year. Okay, well, I'll take it on that. Let's go. The game is in <laughs> Dallas, for the record, so you're going to be good. I mean, I'll, that I'll one, do that. we can I'll already take that. Y'all going to take this the L? You no. Yeah. I, you know, I, I got I to gotta get home so I can console him. I got to get him out of bed. I got to get him out of bed, man. I got to get him up. Eric, it's been good to have you today and all season. We've enjoyed it. So either way, guys, Kobe took a major shot at James Harden yesterday. Skip and Shannon agree with the Mamba. We'll discuss all that he said next. No mercy. Well, James Harden continued his hot streak last night, scoring 44 points in the Rockets' win. Harden has now scored at least 40 points 20 times this season. The Rockets are the fifth seed in the West, but yesterday Kobe Bryant was critical of Harden's ball-dominant style. Let's take a listen to Kobe and also Harden's response. James Harden, of course, Crazy streak this season. What do you think of what he's doing right now? Well, I think he, I'm not a fan of in terms of winning championships. I don't think that style is ever going to win championships. But at the same time, you have to keep your team's head above water to win games. So you have to do what you have to do to win games. And he's doing that. I mean, for right now, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's probably right. You know, this way that we're playing won't happen in the playoffs. won't get us to where we want to go. But we haven't had a full roster yet. So um, I'm excited for that to come. Shannon, is Kobe right here? Yeah, he's right. And he's also right, and James Harden is also right, saying I'm yeah. doing what I have to do in order to, until we get our full team back, and then we'll see what happens. Um, Skip, historically, when you play this type of ball, you don't win games. And Kobe knows firsthand, because when Corey, Kobe had his historic streak, 2005-2006, he averaged 35.4 points a game. He got beat in the first round, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Jordan, 86-87, averaged 37.1. Swept in the first round. The next year, 87-88, averaged 35 points. Lost in the second round. Mm. So they're absolutely right. But what James Harden is doing, if he skip, if James Harden is averaging 30 points, not the 37 that he's averaging, they're probably the 13th or the 14th seed. Mm. He's having to do something historical just in order to get them where they are right now. Now, Chris Paul has been, ba has been back four games, I think, if I'm not mistaken. They gave him a game off. You know, Jenny? Mm. They gave him a game off. Chris Paul. Oh, uh, Skip, did you know that? Skip, Skip, did you know that? They're all doing it. Yeah. Skip, no, I'm just asking, mm. did you know that? Mm. I, you know, me and my researcher, we was up, I was like, let me, uh, Chris Paul, he was out for a hamstring injury. Mm. When he came back, did he start playing? Like, no, you know what, Shannon, over the weekend, they gave him a game off. I was like, oh, that's interesting. So you're saying Chris Paul's better than LeBron James? I'm scared, I don't know what you're saying. All I'm saying yeah. is, is that when guys come off injury, mm. to expect, especially when they've been off a significant amount of time, mm. to expect them to pick right back up where they left off, log the same number of minutes, is asking a bit much. That's all I'm saying. Mm. But 
Le Kobe is absolutely mm. right. This style. Kobe won championships. Win. Shaq and Powell. Mm -hmm. Kobe didn't have to take on the full scoring load. Other guys were being involved. Right now, I don't see a whole lot of involvement in anyone else other than James Harden. I mean, taking the ball out and passing to James Harden is really not involvement. Mm -hmm. He knows, and as historic as James Harden has been, none of this matters, Skip. Mm. James Harden is full aware. He knows what this is about. This is about racing game six. When the opposing team's best player in Kawhi Leonard, and you lose by 100 points on your home court, this is about you having game also seven. Also, no Tony Parker in that game. Right. Yep. This is also mm -hmm. about you losing game seven yep. on your home court mm -hmm. when you got the defending champs down by 10 points. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Now, you can do all this, and it's fine and good. I love watching it. It's it, that step back and him getting to the rim. Mm -hmm. Because guess what, Skip? James Harden has found out they don't call the games in the playoffs like they do. And all this ticky-tack stuff that he gets mm -hmm. called now, they don't call it in the playoffs. Mm. So what then? When they get Capella back, mm -hmm. when Chris Paul gets back up to full speed, in order for them to get what the, get to where they want to be, and that is overtake Golden State mm. and represent the West in the finals, mm. James Harden is not going to average 40 points in the playoffs. That's not going to happen. And if he does average 40 points, guess what? They're going home. Mm. My take on this is I much agree with Kobe's big picture premise about it because you're right. He speaks of what he knows first. He learned the hard way won't work. And to your point about James Harden, how much fun he is to watch. I, I turned on his game at Phoenix last night mm -hmm. against the worst team in the world. I mean, they've lost the most games in sure. all of basketball. And I just couldn't stop watching because he was putting on a show because it's his home away from home. Right. He played at Arizona grew up in, State. Yeah. No, he, he grew up in L.A. He grew, yeah, he grew up in Arizona. Yeah, 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 but he played at Arizona yeah, State. So, now, to, to the reason this wasn't fair criticism from Kobe, if you look hard at what happened against Golden State last year, they had them down three to two with still home court because they were going to get games. So they had to go back for game six to Golden right. State. Which they were up that game. Okay, they were up that game, but they had lost Chris Paul in game five, five. at home. But they had won game five. They hung on to win it. And I, this is just me. It just looked like Golden State was dead in the water. Correct. It just looked like if, if Chris Paul had stayed upright, if, if he had been able to go, it just looked like they were going to close the deal. Yeah. So, to Kobe's point, could James Harden, playing a little different way, he didn't play exactly the, the all-out James Harden way because right. he had Chris, and he still had Eric Gordon, and he had Capella, and he had, remember, he had Trevor Reese, Trevor Reese and Imba Mute, Mute to play defense with P.J. Tucker playing right. defense and with Gerald Green coming off the bench and with Nene coming off the bench. So they were a loaded basketball team playing at a very high defensive as well as offensive level. Right. Could they have closed that deal? I say yes. Yeah. Could they have beaten LeBron in the finals? I, I would have given them a good shot. Yes. It would have been an interesting series, yeah. but I would give Houston the edge in that. Right. So James Harden, very possibly without the – pulled hamstring of Chris Paul would have a ring. And, and did he do it exactly this way last year? Well, well, Kobe's right. He's doing it this way because he has no other way. He's because, just trying to keep them afloat. Because last year, uh, I think he led the league in scoring, but he was – and James Harden was dynamic. But Skip, nothing like this. Nope. And it's not like he scored – Skip, he scored 44. They won by eight. Yeah. They make it seem – it's not like he's scoring these points and they're blowing teams out. No. Nope. They need every one of his points they, to they win. Do. And he scored 58, and they lost. Yep. And by the way, last year I looked at game four and five, which they won to go up three to two. Mm -hmm. And in game four, he did score 30, but he was three of 12 from three. And then in game five, I have no idea how they won game he five, but they did because he was awful. He, he scored 19 on five of 21, including 0 of 11 from three. Yes. And they still won the game. Yep. And I keep looking at the box score, and I, I'm vague on what happened. I think Durant had a bad yeah. fourth quarter. Well, remember, he wouldn't yeah. – he, he, yeah. He tried to pass. I think he, he passed up the yep. final shot or yep. something. Yeah, and they hung on and won that game 98-94. But with Chris Paul, I think we'd be having a very different conversation. Yeah, but if they hadn't gone 
and Arctic Cole from yep. the three-point line in game seven they win. They missed, what, 20-plus shots in a row from three? They did. They sure did. If they, if they make two, mm-hmm. if they make three of the 20, okay. they probably win. Okay, so was James playing exactly the way he's playing now then? Not exactly, right. but, but he was still taking a lot of shots. He was, but what he's doing, Skip, if you look at his field goal percentage, it's ticking up. Mm-hmm. You look at his three-point percentage, it's ticking up. We have a, now he, I mean, he's always been an 85-plus 80, percent free-throw shooter. He is really good shooting free-throws. Uh, he is to, very trustable to, and dependable. To get to the line that much and to maintain that concentration yeah, level, I, I agree. It's, a, it's, it's something to behold. So I'm with your, your bottom-line point. The reason I don't trust James going forward is not the style with which he plays. It's just that killer thing, that mental toughness. When when the going gets tough, this guy doesn't always get going. And you brought up the Spurs game and there was a Golden State flameout. That that's where I need to see James just say, okay, I got this. Right. We got this far. Now I gotta I gotta do this. Right. Right? Okay. Well, he is leading the league, and the next closest player is Anthony Davis. So should the Lakers give up everything for that guy? Rob Parker has an opinion on this. Next. No mercy. Back to the NBA. The trade deadline is uh, two days away. Anthony Davis wants to be traded, but it's going to take a ton to land him. Multiple reports say the Lakers increased their offer to the Pelicans yesterday with a package that included Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, and two First round picks. Woj reports the Pelicans are looking for more, including four picks as part of a deal. And Ramona Shelburne reports the Lakers are, quote, growing increasingly pessimistic about the Pelicans' willingness to make a deal. All right, we're joined by Rob Parker. Good mm-hmm. to have you back with us. What's happening? <laughs> What's going on, Skip? Mm. I haven't seen you. All right. <sighs> I'm real good. <laughs> He's real good, and we will get to I plenty that. more of yes, that later. But first, with all of these rumors, how much do the Lakers, in your opinion, give up for AD? They should give up everything and anything. Kitchen sink, if they want to throw Jeannie <laughs> Bust in there, throw her into the deal, hey. whatever. Because what they oh, have oh, there... not going bust? anywhere. Did you put a T on uh, No, Bust. Oh. B-U-S-S. Oh, Sorry, yeah, Jeannie okay. Bust. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they should give up everything. Yep. I mean, seriously. LeBron, Magic, they know they can't win with this mm-hmm. squad that they have here. It's fraudulent. So if they can somehow, some way, convince the Pelicans to make this trade, even though I don't believe the trade is going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think they asked for the moon just to see if the Lakers, how far they would push or whatever. But you can't make this deal, especially not now. There are way too many other suitors that would be more appealing or have more to offer coming up in the summer Are you sure rather than right that? now. I am. How? What if What if the Knicks get the first pick? I'm just saying, if the Knicks get the first pick. And you think, so let me ask you a question. Do and, you honestly believe that Zion Williamson, straight up for Anthony Davis, is a good deal? I would I would take Anthony Davis. Exactly. Yeah. No, but, but I'm, I'm just, saying, why would the Pelicans do that, Skip? No, because what if, they need to rebuild and have a star that they will have control over for five or six years. That would be Zion. So all I'm saying is, that could p- potentially be in the mix. That's all, Shannon. I'm just saying, I'm not going to take cast-offs, never was I like Kyle Kuzma. Everybody else in that deal, you're basically giving me a 35-win team from a year ago, and you've seen what they've done this year without LeBron. They're not good. And basically, if you're the GM of the Pelicans, this is like your wife breaks up with you, she asks you to... to she ask you, to uh, load up the moving truck and drive it over to a new boyfriend's house. That's what they're asking the Lakers to do. Yeah. That, that, it really, so, so it's just not, it doesn't work. If well, you if are, you get what you want, the divorce element, drive it over there. No, because <laughs> if, if I'm a Pelican fan and they make a deal with the Lakers and just give Anthony Davis and take their scraps, basically you got punked by the Lakers and they just came and took your guy. And there's a, there's a business part of it and saving face even though he's walking out. And I, I get it. I don't want anybody who doesn't want to play for me either. Yeah. But I'm not going to help the Lakers. Just the same way San Antonio didn't help the Lakers with Kawhi Leonard. Where did they send him? Skip, you remember when Brett Favre, where did he want to go when he got traded from Green Bay? He said, I want to go to Minnesota. What did they do? Trade him to the Jets. He got to Minnesota, but I'm not sending you there. I'm not going to send you yeah. to a division rival. So I don't understand why they would do it. If I'm the Pelicans, ask for the moon. And who knows? Maybe the Lakers are that desperate. Maybe they'll give up something. Well, you asked for the moon. And not only did I give you the moon, I threw in a star or two. 
You know what I'm saying? You ask, I've given you everything you've asked for. That's you said, I want Lonzo, I want Kuzma, I want Ingram, I want two first rounders, I want second rounders. <laughs> well, throw in Beasley and Lance. Okay, you can have that. Uh, wait a minute. Let me get back to you. Okay, I've given you, Skip, if, if we say, okay, if you go to your new job and you say, I want, this is more, my, I want my annual salary, mm -hmm. I want you to throw in this for a clothing allot, uh, uh, allotment, I want you to give me six work, uh, six week vacation. And they say, okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And you're like, uh, well, what, what's the problem? I've given what you wanted. I needed you to work out my deal when I came <laughs> to Fox. Right. You know what I'm saying, Skip? Six if somebody weeks. give you what you asked for, Skip, mm -hmm. and then you still pause, what's the problem? That tells you you really don't want to make a deal. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's what and that's what's happening. Skip. That's why the Lakers are saying now they're pessimistic. There's no, there's really not a price that's too high. Like I said before, and you and I have talked about this on, on numerous occasions, Skip. Other than LeBron James, mm -hmm. if this is a grocery store, you open it up and says, whatever you want, or if it's a department store, pick from the high, you know, the good stuff is on the high end or in the lock cases, you know, everything. Anything that's in the lock cases, mm -hmm. you're welcome to mm -hmm. for Anthony Davis. So, okay, I, I don't really know what it, because this is all they have, Skip. They don't have anything else. Yeah, the Knicks might. Mm -hmm. They might. Okay, Nick, you don't get the first pick. But well, why the can't they get the same trade that they're offering in the summer, Shannon? What would change if I get to look at all the other offers and then come back to the Lakers? They're still going to be there. There's no, there's no rush. Okay, I'll come back you're to banking, you. You still you, want them? You know what you're saying? You're also banking on. Now, Kyrie said early in the season, he stood up in front of all that fan, had a little fan, fair skip. I'm definitely sad. I'm That's resided. not what he said. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, he did. No, he at did not. At the beginning of the year. At the beginning, I ain't talking you, about... You said definitely. That's He said, my plan is to re-sign here if you'll have me. Okay. That's what, not, I'm definitely oh, signing. What Am I did, right, Skip? Okay, what did he say last week? He said that, uh, <laughs> hit me up in July. <laughs> hit me up in July. I'll and let you know. That's a whole... I know. It, it's not whether or not they have him. I don't really know what else the Lakers can offer, Skip, to sweeten this deal. They've given them everything. They've asked for a statue. They said they can have the Magic Johnson or the Kareem <laughs> statue that's out front and maybe even a banner. There's nothing else the Lakers have to offer. Mm -hmm. Either the Pelicans want to do the deal or they don't. And they don't because they don't want to send Anthony Davis where he wants to go. It's as simple as that. What has Rich Paul made clear to everybody? Anthony Davis wants to play with LeBron James, period, end of story. Yes. He's never going to be quite as happy anywhere else as he will be with LeBron James. Correct. So if you wait until the summer, the market could start to cool Super on correct. Anthony Davis league-wide because it's iffy whether would he really resign. I know the Paul George gamble paid off, but he's different. He's cut from different well, But a lot of people criticize OKC for making that deal. Everybody knew said Paul George was going to the Lakers. Mm -hmm. Why would you trade for him? He's not going to stay. And what happened? He got there and liked it. It's like Toronto what? making the, the same thing with Kawhi. And, and with Kawhi. Kawhi. And when Kawhi goes to the Clippers, then what you going to say? Nothing. But I'm saying it's worth a try. And for some team... They might say, I don't care, okay, we'll, it's Celtics, worth a try. It's worth how much of a try. Are you going to give up one of your stud stars? Your younger, you're going to give up Jalen Brown for, for the well, going to take First of all, for starters, it's going to take Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. It Tatum has would. to be involved in the deal, no doubt about okay. it. And if you don't have Kyrie, what, what, why would Anthony Davis, first of all, his dad said he doesn't want to go. Rich Paul has put it out there that he doesn't. Mm -hmm. he's not going to resign with Boston. Yep. So why would, you, why would you go to Boston mm -hmm. with no Jalen Brown, no Jason Tatum, and no Kyrie? You could, go to, you could go to L.A. in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And you notice the reason that the Lakers are desperate is LeBron, the clock is ticking. He's getting older by yeah, the well, minute. There's no secret about that. Here's where I part ways with my friend Rob Parker. I part <laughs> ways many times with, with Rob Parker. But in this case, these Laker kids, once they get out from under Luke Walton, they are going to flourish. They would flourish under Alvin Gentry. He's much more of a player's coach. I don't like Luke Walton, and I told you that from the start. He's the wrong guy, especially to coach Lonzo, whose ego can be a little tricky. He's an AAU baby. He got a little spoiled by his father coming up. Mm -hmm. Lonzo Ball is going to turn into a star someplace star. else. Star. Star. And if you go back and look at what these kids did to Oklahoma City at Oklahoma City, it's about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Just go back and look at the box score. They all have star potential. Kuzma has star potential. I, Brandon I like Ingram Kuzma. has star potential. And your man Zubots, he can be a starting five on a good team in this yes. league. That's yes. all. I'm not saying he's going to make the all-star team. Correct. But he can be 
a credible starter at, and manning the post in this league because he's getting stronger by the dribble. And they should have beat he's Houston two weeks skilled. ago. They should have beaten Houston. And Lonzo has been putting up big numbers. He was putting up good numbers in that game. It was the Houston game that he turned yeah. his ankle. He can't stay healthy, though, right. Skip. That's well, a now fact. You, if, if you're right about that, then you got me. But when he's right, he can be really right. This is a troubled team with Luke Walton trying to run the show. I don't know if he's trying to to sort of lord it over these kids to show that I'm, you know, I'm Bill Walton's kid. I played in this league. Don't you remember? I played with Kobe Bryant. I won rings with Kobe Bryant, right? right? And yet it's, there, there's something wrong. I'm not sure Luke's going to last through the All-Star break. Wow. My point is that if you give me those four, if you throw in Zubats too, if the store is open, and if you throw in a couple of more picks, that is a haul, man. That's Th- that is worth Anthony Davis because you put those kids, if you want, if you can keep Julius Randle, keep Miritich, and obviously Drew Holiday is, is a star, two-way player. He can defend as well as he can score. Mm-hmm. And he's more of a two-guard, which is why LeVar he has so – well yeah. Lo- He worked so well with Rondo. Yeah, he did work well with Rondo, and he'd work great with Lonzo. And I don't know what LeVar is doing, except that LeVar doesn't want him in the – remember, New Orleans is the smallest market in the NBA. Mm-hmm. It's number 30 of all the right. TV markets, right. right, the media markets. Mm-hmm. And so is, is that the problem, or is it that the flight's too far for LeVar to fly <laughs> to New Orleans? And he wants him in Phoenix. So why would he want him in Phoenix with the worst team in basketball? I, I don't get that. In the West? So you're at the bottom of the West, and you want Lonzo to go play with that? Why? I, 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 don't, I, get I don't get it either, but I just don't see, Skip, the, the, the public relations nightmare. I mean, New Orleans has already been through heck with the, uh, getting okay. jobbed in the, in the Super Bowl, right? Champ- going to Super- the NFC, yeah. NFC Championship, yeah. NFC championship yeah. game, and now here the star player doesn't want to be there. You know, next thing you find, mice hair in the gumbo. I don't know what else could be worse <laughs> in New Orleans. That. No, we well, don't. Seriously. Look, we tried to handle this respectfully behind closed doors. Mm. We told you we weren't resigning. We tried, look, Dale, we're not going to resign. Mm. So let's go ahead and deal Anthony Davis. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at Anthony. Look at the numbers. He's having a career year, 29 points, 13 rebounds, four, four, uh, four assists, two blocks, two steals. Look how he's interacting with his teammates. No, Miss Benson, he's fine. Oh, he loves it here. That's just mm-hmm. his... Anthony Davis will not resign long term. You see what you forced me to yeah, do? Yeah, but 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 you're asking basically, you'd say into New Orleans, you you're saying you want to do a nice behind closed doors, but there was a gun in my back. Okay. I mean that, yeah, that's I had to see the gun. I, 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 yeah, I, I got felt it. Costed. I, I felt okay. the gun. We'll hey, make a deal. <laughs> all I know, LeBron James wants this to happen. Yep. It's going to happen. It's not going to happen, mm-hmm. Skip. It's going to happen by Thursday. Mm-hmm. No days. way, no how they're going to make a trade with them by 3 Thursday. 3 p.m. Eastern, Three. our what deadline. You said about the Patriots. Whatever, oh, we'll yeah. talk about Speaking that. Speaking of those Patriots, you know, we had to ask you, you about had to bring AD that in. Rob, yeah. But I've been waiting to ask you if you could finally give Tom Brady some respect. Like a little credit? I'm going to give you Just some touch? break to think about it. Yeah. We'll be back with that next. <laughs> Ain't happening. <laughs> no mercy. Oh, well, those Patriots, they are champions again, and Rob Parker is here with us, what are you which means. There, Rob? Yeah. It needs to be some yeah, vodka. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need to know what's in the cup, but it's hot we do tea. need to know how you can explain another Super Bowl win for Tom Brady. Uh, can you say the Super Bowl win for the New England Patriots? Oh. Tom Brady okay. was there for the ride, I get it, but Tom Brady should get down on his hands and knees. And thank Jared Goff that there was a quarterback who played worse than him. Right. Shannon, that was the worst performance by a man in a mask since Adam West played Batman in that old sitcom. <laughs> Jared Goff was awful. I mean, he had a man wide open in the end zone. And this is the thing, Skip. You can give Brady all the credit. Well, what about the drive and the, the, the three passes and that all that? What about if it, it? was yeah. all about yeah. that, well, what about it? Why didn't they give him the MVP? Mm. Instead, well, they give a good question. They Thank give the MVP <laughs> to the guy he was throwing the football to. Mm. And who didn't even have a touchdown. That's how poorly Brady played. Mm. This was supposed to be, Skip, a coronation. It turned into a slumber party. Mm. And, and Brady just happened to be there. Mm. He was not that guy, Skip. He looked like a 41-year-old guy. You know what he looked like that uh, Super Bowl night? Mm. He looked like Peyton Manning when Von Miller hand-delivered a parting gift as a <laughs> Super Bowl to him. Remember in 2015? I do remember. Uh, uh, I was at that game. Peyton Manning, 141 yards. A pick, two fumbles, Brady. A bad pick on his first throw in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. He had a fumble. He just wasn't that good. I mean, he really wasn't. 
And, and that's why the first three and a half quarters negated even that last drive. It still wasn't good enough for them to say he was the MVP. Mm -hmm. That would have been crowning for Tom Brady to win his sixth and also be the MVP right. and lead that team. Bill Belichick helped them out. You ripped Bill Belichick last year. He didn't help him with the defense. Mm. They gave up three points. Mm. Three. Three points. Mm. The lowest uh, point total of a losing team since 1971, the Dolphins. So wait a second. So is Tom Belichick Br that great or is Jared Goff that bad? No, J Jared Goff was terrible. I'm just oh, saying. okay. But Tom Brady had all the opportunity in the world to put up a couple of points. Mm -hmm. He could have been the MVP. He couldn't do it. Even the writers who love him. Couldn't do it. What writers who love They him. love Tom Brady. They don't they, love Tom Janet, Brady. Janet, they couldn't do it because you know what? They know they would have had to give it to at least a mm. defensive player. I would have given should, it to the whole defense. They should have gave it to Stephon Gilmore. He had the big interception, and, and he also caused call the, the fumble, fumble, right? And three pass defense and five tackles. Mm. For me, this was a long time great Bill Belichick coaching performance. Uh, I thought Brian Flores did an unbelievable job of calling the game. And Goody's got a head coaching he job. He's got a head coaching job. Because I, I, I believe, Skip, when you hold a team 30 points under what they normally get, <laughs> That's saying something. You hold them to 100 and, two, 161 fewer yards than what they normally get. Mm -hmm. That's saying something. And to make them look that inept, mm -hmm. it looked as if the Rams had no business. Mm -hmm. First of all, <clears throat> forget being in the Super Bowl because you can go back and say, well, they shouldn't have been in the Super Bowl because of the bad call. Mm -hmm. it, they made the Rams look like they didn't even belong in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's how bad they made the Rams look. And for them to come out there and, like I said, Tom Brady did not play his best game. I think this is one of his most poorly played mm. Super Bowl games. They won. He had the drive at the end, but <clears throat> that defensive performance overshadowed mm. even that drive, Skip. Mm. Uh, Wade always does a great job with Tom Brady. He does. He, he, did a, he did a great job early of getting pressure on him. They shut the run down for the most part, except, except Skip, when they needed to get the ball back. There was mm. four minutes left in the ball game, mm -hmm. and they went, what, seven, eight, nine straight runs and the Rams had no answer mm -hmm. for that. They ended up getting the ball back, but it was mm -hmm. really null and void. And, Shannon, really, Sony Michelle could have been in that mix for MVP. Yeah. Averaged 5.2 yards a carry and had the only touchdown. Mm -hmm. So he's another guy. I know he didn't go over 100 yards, yeah. but 5.2 a carry is good enough. Mm. You know, I'm weary of this. Which part? It's been going on year after year after year. <laughs> Skip, we've been I, together I try, since 2006. I, I try to warn you. I try to tell you so, and you just won't give in or give it up. Shannon has to a certain degree. A little bit. Tom Brady now has six rings thanks to six game-winning drives in the fourth quarter or overtime. That's all-time special. That's all-time clutch. That's, that's all-time Tom Brady and yet the Brady hate just grows and grows by the victory. And I, for one, don't get it because I see through all the off-field stuff. I don't care about any Brady off the field, but it is palpable, the Brady hate. And that's why the Super Bowl rating was, what, the worst in 10 years? Worst yeah. in 10 Steelers. years. Steelers Cardinals. That's crazy. People are sick and tired of Patriots number one, but somewhere in that mix is Tom Brady. I don't disagree with you. Okay. I think there is a Patriots and, and fatigue, a Brady sure. fatigue. I have a number of friends in the L.A. area and beyond, but, but I know some actors here and I know some rappers here, and I heard from all of them <laughs> over the weekend. They are sick to death of Tom Brady, sick to death. And I say, why? It's greatness on display. It's, it's a pleasure. Like, I'm honored to sit and watch this guy yeah. perform because this is greatness now. Because you realize how special it is. It's special what he did up against Wade Phillips. He's got two players he can throw to. One's a former seventh-round pick who played quarterback in college named Julian Edelman, who's coming off major knee reconstruction. And a four-game suspension okay? for PEDs. True. That is true. Yeah. Uh, you see, we went from yeah. PED suspension to MVP at the Super Bowl. Okay. Mm. All right. Great. And Other guys also, can't get in the Hall of Fame. He's also throwing to a man on his last legs, the shell of himself, who used to be Rob Gronkowski, who probably played his last game in the Super Bowl. Those are your two targets because your two quote-unquote deep threats, Chris Hogan and Philip Dorsett, catch zero balls in the Super Bowl. And the one guy you could rely on is your little safety valve, little James White coming out of the backfield. Wade Phillips said, no, mm -hmm. you cannot have him. One catch for five yards. And yet... When it was time, Tom Brady finally said, okay, I'm going to crack your code. And he made four straight throws that won the football game effectively with that one touchdown. How come he didn't get the MVP? 
Well, to me, I would have given him the MVP just off that one drive. No, you can't. I don't disagree with your defensive premise if you could give it to the whole defense. I'm not sure Stephon Gilmore did enough to say, oh, he stood completely out because the one pick is just – he just threw it up for grabs. And I, I don't know if that was a special interception. Mm -hmm. And yet, in, in the end, I don't even care about the MVP. This guy's got six championships. And yet – I, I'm hearing from all these guys who are big people in their areas, and, and they have no respect for him. And I try to see through it, and I say, is it the Trump hat, the Make America Great hat? That was How many years ago was that? Like four we're, years we're ago? 20, 26 okay. yeah. But But the owner, Robert Kraft, is the best friend of Donald Trump, yet you, you like the owner. Everybody him. likes Robert Kraft, right? Everybody. I mean, so, he, he's, he's on the... Uh, um, <clears throat> Criminal justice reform. He, is. he hangs okay. out with Meek Mill. Okay. Saturday night, okay. he's dancing with Cardi B. Okay, not, not dancing well, but he's <laughs> yeah. dancing. And he's the first to say publicly, my my closest but, friend in the world is that guy that nobody likes, and I'm, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I get that. But Tom Brady had the hat in his locker one moment, and he's disqualified. Is it? It's is, not just that. Okay, Skip, is it Giselle? Is it the other? No, boots? it's is it's it, uh, it's the it's the all shucks. Even the thing where he made it like he didn't know what was going on right. with the kneeling. Remember, like. Oh, no, uh, no I, I, there was some, some, it happened like a couple of his teammates did it. He acted as if he didn't even know. And I think it's just disingenuous. And okay. you know, he comes off some. But I'm surprised. Okay, but wait a second. Michael Jordan said, leave me out of all this. Yeah. I don't want any Mike, of this. But Michael, want... Michael Jordan got bashed during his playing days. People didn't like Michael for but that. But I think Skipper said, in... yes. but people still watched him. Hey. And they still loved him. Yeah, yeah they bashed him. Hey, but I, I went back and forth with our man Nelly. And I said, didn't you love watching Jordan even when he won his sixth ring? Because the, the interest grew towards right. six rings while the interest wanes on Tom Brady. Well, I, you know, here's the thing, Skip. What, let's just say for the sake of argument, because a lot of people knew this was going to be Michael Jordan's coronation. Mm -hmm. What if, because they're like, oh, we got to deal with Tom again next year. Oh, well, they'll be back again. Yeah. And I'm surprised, but considering that every year he's a top two, top three jer jersey seller. I mean, how many different Patriots jerseys could you possibly have? Right. I don't know. But, but that has to That be makes no Patriot. sense to me. I'm that, with you. That's, that's in Patriot Nation. No, that's, Skip, that's they can't a, buy that many jerseys. More than, more than, more <laughs> than, that's NFL America. <laughs> yes. Right. And they, you figure they already have his jersey. Right. They but bought it 20 years ago. Extreme Patriot burnout and fatigue because they just, what was Brady's slogan that he yelled to the crowd before they left? We're still yeah. here. Yeah. Well, they are. Yeah, and most people are saying, they're still here. We wish you'd go away. Go right. away. Go but you away. know what, Skip? Maybe somebody, some people think he's disingenuous. Yeah. That, I, I mean, I, Peyton Manning, I mean, okay. when you get Peyton Manning. I, I, I got that. But yet, I've never heard one ex-teammate of him. No, 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 no. A whole bunch of They love him. But, but Skip, they you even him. said it when, when he does the all shucks no, know, and gee oh whiz. He's so guarded. He's so yes. scripted, Skip. He, he's not, I mean, like, like Peyton, I mean, I think pay, people really think Peyton is a guy that would, come on, let's go to the market. Yeah, okay. right. right. All right, And then he has a, he, and plus then, he has, a, he has a model for a wife. They're like, you're not like us. We couldn't have no model. Okay, Who well, makes well, more money than you? Who what did the NFL money? Network report two weeks ago? He walked in the facility and said to no one in particular, I'm the baddest MF on the planet. Right. Yeah. And he deep down, that's what he of believes. Course. And that's how he plays. He's yeah. got it in him. Maybe yeah. a little nerdy, Tom. But also yeah. that, Tom, yeah. is what we right. saw and yeah. what we had. You don't think Peyton well. Manning thought he was Thank the baddest? Thank you dude? for joining yes. us. I appreciate I your time Thank and you. sorry you had to sit through that. No, one. that's all right. <laughs> Did Carson Wentz admits admit that he is a bad teammate? Uh, there's been some shocking reports, and he answered that question next. No mercy. Well, Carson Wentz's character was called out by his teammates last month in a report by the Philly Voice. In the report, a handful of Eagles players called Wentz, quote, egotistical and selfish. Wentz addressed the situation recently, saying this. It's never fun to read, but to an extent, you look at it and be like, well, if someone did have this perception of me, why? What have I done wrong? What can I get better at? I realize I have my shortcomings. Yes, I can be selfish. I think we all have selfishness inside of us. There's human elements to that that I really look at and say, well, I can get better. Mm -hmm. Shannon, mm -hmm. your opinion, what's going on here? Skip, this is not a great look for Carson Wentz. And at the time that I said it, my grandma used to say all the time, boy, there's a little truth even in a lie. Um, for me, I wouldn't have said anything because it makes the players that went to bat for him look bad. Mm -hmm. Fletcher Cox went to bat for him. He did. Lane Johnson, mm -hmm. Malcolm Jenkins. There are a lot of guys that went to bat, put their credibility on the line for this joker. Yep. 
And, and for me, now all of a sudden he wants to be reflective. Had this article not come out, Skip Bayless, do you believe Carson Wentz would have been reflective? Absolutely not. Absolutely mm. not. Mm. So now, guys that went to bat for you, Skip Bayless, look, the one thing you know as an athlete, you're very perceptive. You understand who and what you are yep. at all times. Mm -hmm. So for him to like, well, I didn't know and I wish somebody if they felt this way about me, you knew. Mm -hmm. And I said this was going to be a problem, Skip Bayless. They put that shrine up for Nick Foles. Mm -hmm. They ain't never put no shrine up for Carson Wentz. No. Hold on, dude. Do you know what they gave up for me? I ain't get no shrine. That was a big deal. That yeah. was a big, yeah. big yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal because he knew what they gave up for mm -hmm. him. So now I already come in with my chest puffed out, Skip. Look, do you know they moved heaven and earth to get me? Yep. I'm the guy. And now y'all got a guy in here and y'all putting up shrines. Yep. Y'all got candles burning. Y'all got all this. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. I knew there was some truth to this article. It's hard for me to believe that someone would write an article that this scathing and make the entire thing up. Mm -hmm. Too many details. Too yeah. many. Yep. Too many. Mm -hmm. And you know why, Skip? It hit so close to home, yep. it made the old gopher come up out of his hole mm -hmm. and to say something. Really? Old Parks and Tawny Field, you know, oh. he come out and you, you see his yeah. shadow, you go, you know, springtime yeah. might be, you know, here, might be three more weeks of winter, or well, six more weeks of winter. So he read the Carson Wentz story and he said, I got to talk about this? Yeah, Carson Wentz read the story like, oh. Uh, oh. they talking about me, not oh, me they talking about. So guess what? Showed his head. So allow me to quote one of my favorite lines from Shakespeare's Hamlet. Mm. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Meaning, you're trying to tell me this isn't true, this isn't true, this isn't true, and you keep saying it so much, I'm getting suspicious it, it is, is true. true. Exactly. So he called together a group of reporters and sat down yesterday to explain to each one of them, this isn't true, this isn't true, this isn't true. But Th This is right, but this isn't true, this isn't true. And he reached all the way for... This is the line. I'm about to go read my Bible. Then I get a text from the PR person, and, and now I'm reading about this story. Well, don't tell me you're about to read your Bible. You, you're reaching for the sympathy, right? Oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, he all oh, in the you, Bible. You poor man, you're about to read your Bible, and all of a sudden yeah. you get a text. You got blasted in this story. Oh, How skip. dare you? Oh, 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 skip. Come on, skip. that's too much. Can, can, Stop. Can, can, skip, can the reporter ask, yeah. where in the Bible does it say we should be selfish <laughs> or we should be egotistical? <laughs> can you read me that verse, that verse and chapter? I'm serious about this. I do feel sorry for this kid, and he's still a kid. He got a terrible break because out of nowhere, Nick Foles has come in and played better than he has been able to play. Yeah. Nick Foles was the MVP of this Super Bowl a year ago. Yes. The MVP, and he scored 41 on Belichick's defense. How can you top that? How can you overcome that? There's only one way we're going to find out what Carson Wentz is really made of, and that is if they do franchise Nick yep. Foles and they're able to trade Nick Foles. Right. They right. need to clear the decks. He got He's him. your guy. Let him be your guy. Yep. Let him show you all of his true colors. Mm -hmm. Let's see how the veterans react to him when he is the only guy. Right. Right? Right. Because he's got huge ability. We saw it two years ago. Mm -hmm. Does he get Hurt too much? Yes, he's been hurt too much. Yes. Can he stay healthy? We don't know. And how does that chemistry then yep. affect the locker room? Yep. Because he now knows how his teammates feel about him. I mean, this is going to be a busy offseason for yes, this it group. Is. He up there talking about He done called the media over, and now he's going to tell him he's going to read his Bible. Reading. Busy oh, reading. You could have just said Stop you were it. reading. <laughs> okay, Julian Edelman is the Super Bowl MVP, but does that mean he is heading to the Hall of Fame? We'll discuss but that you know, next. Ooh. No mercy. Our final topic of the day, Julian Edelman was named Super Bowl MVP on Sunday, and now the talk is centering around his chances to make the Hall of Fame. He is now a three-time Super Bowl champ with the second most catches and receiving yards in playoff history, but Edelman has also never been named a pro bowler. So, Shannon, mm. should Edelman be a Hall of Fame? No, no, no. <laughs> stop this. Mm. This is asinine. Mm. This is asinine, 10, 10 15,000. Okay. We need to stop this ridiculousness. You went to 15,000? Yes, time? just because he's been unbelievable in the playoffs, Skip. Yes. But he's in a passing era. He has two 1,000-yard receivers. This is the first year he's been the best receiver on his own team. 
You can't get to the Pro Bowl with no Pro Bowls, no first-team All-Pros, mm -hmm. two 1,000-yard seasons. Mm -hmm. When you look at all these guys that have numbers far superior to his, mm -hmm. so you're just gonna. So now it's just a playoff war. If that's the case, you got to put Joe Flacco in, Skip, yep. because he's tied with Tom Brady for most road playoff wins. Yep. Or, or Eli, he and Eli right, are tied, yeah. I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Come on, this is ridiculous. Because now he, oh, you see what he's doing. He's second to Jerry Rice and catches in yards. Y'all need to stop this. Yep. He's had an unbelievable career, but he's not even close mm -hmm. to being a Hall of Fame. Okay. I'm going to pay tribute to Julian Edelman by saying on Sunday night, well after the game, I actually sat back and thought about it. So I actually had this conversation in my head. Is it possible he's a Hall of Famer? Well, no, but at least I'm going to give him that much okay. credit. I actually thought about it, and I think you've thought hard about it. Yeah. Because he's second on the all-time playoff list in yards to Jerry Rice mm -hmm. and catches to Jerry Rice. Mm -hmm. And by the way, in just per game yards in playoffs, he's a yard ahead of Jerry because Jerry played in 29, yeah, 29 playoff games to 18 playoff okay. games. Mm -hmm. So he's actually averaging a yard more than Jerry averaged in his playoff career. Well, that's pretty great. But the rest of it, I got nothing. Yeah. I, I, I saw on his football reference that, oh, the last three years in the uh, NFL's top 100, he's gone from 98th to 88th to 78th. Well, that's in the whole – that's out of 100 players. <laughs> yes. That's all you got? Well, that's not Hall of Fame worthy, right? It's not even close. Yeah. But it, you got to give him credit. He's done a he's, lot of He's had stuff an unbelievable more. career to come in yes, as a seventh-round drafted quarterback to turn himself into a very good player. He has. But that is it Hall for us. We will be back tomorrow morning at 930 Eastern. Right now, Colin's going to tell you why Tom Brady has had it much tougher than Michael Jordan. The herd starts right now. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. But before we go, I wanted to tell you about one of our sponsors. Here's a quick and free way to finally stick to your New Year's resolutions. Start listening to podcasts on Spotify. With more than 150,000 podcasts, including Oprah's Super Soul Conversations, The Tim Ferriss Show, Happier with Gretchen Rubin, and The Nutrition Diva, you can learn how to balance a budget, balance your diet, and how to feel balanced while meditating. Even if you're still wondering if the cat's been fed. All podcasts on Spotify are free and you can even download episodes for those times when you've gone off the grid, you know, to get all that newfound balance into your life. So start the year off right with podcasts on Spotify. That's all for us. Join us again, same time, tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. See you then. Fox Sports, one of one. one.